on Bourbon Street, and right now it is mass humanity as Pete Fountain's band carries through. Bourbon Street is really the place to kind of just drink and uh, bum around, and you don't know who you'll run into or what you'll run into. Not much parade activity, but the uh, half-assed walking band is moving half slow. They had the police escort through here to make things rather interesting. Bourbon Street is, of course, of course internationally famous and world-known, and uh, we're trying to keep an eye on what's going on as people throw doubloons. Larry Matson will continue to row Bourbon Street. He seems to feel comfortable down there, and we'll continue to bring you the uh, coverage as people walk through here. We're waiting, too, for the, uh, the Bourbon Street fashion show that is back in operation this year. They've kind of changed the name around a little bit, and they've changed uh, a number of things involved as far as the awards going to the costumes. As the band beats up, Chris Myers reporting live from Bourbon Street at the Royal Sinesta. Let's go over to Canal Street. Hi, Chris. Thanks very much. Uh, you're viewing Canal Street. There is a, a whole lot of activity going on here, and you can hear the Southern University Marching Band, and uh, they're having a tough time getting through the crowd. That has to be one of the highlights of Mardi Gras Day, the Southern University Marching Band. I mean, their show is like none other, and as Eric said, they closed the World's Fair, and it was the, the climax for sure. Now, as you, as you uh, can take a look here, the crowds have gotten so enthusiastic here on Canal Street. They're pouring on to the uh, to the street, and it really is having a. They're really having a tough time getting through. Now, the rest of the parade has kind of uh, gone or gone off. Yeah, it's slowing And them the down. marching band is kind of stuck here. But this is a lot of people, and I guess they all want to get a look at the marching band as they come up Canal Street. A lot of noise here. Lots of noise. Well, look at them all. It's like a sea of people here, and I. You, the police are having. Uh, having a time now trying to clear that crowd and you think they just kind of move out of the way but uh, everybody wants to get a look and you can see from atop our camera on the Marriott Hotel just how many people are on Canal Street. Do you remember seeing this many people in years past? No, no, not this early. Not this early. But yeah, later I, in the day you get a whole lot. I don't know what exactly the problems are but uh, the people are just not moving out of the way for the parade and that is slowing Zulu down considerably. I mean, we've got the first maybe tenth of the parade at least six blocks up now, and Southern's band is having we, a hard time getting through. We still haven't seen uh, the first float yet because yet. there's so many people lining the street. All right, let's go to a couple of spots, and we'll be back with more coverage of Mardi Gras after this. Carnival Spirit 85 will continue. Yes, I want one. You're looking now at Queen Zulu, Sharon Jackson from Harvey, Louisiana. She's the mother of a son, Jarrett. And she is the daughter of Mr. Alex and Mrs. Edna Knapper. She went to McDonough 16 Elementary School, C.J. Colton Junior High, in Marrero Middle School, and Charity Hospital School of Surgical Technology. She is profiled in Who's Who in American High School Students. In 1978, she made her debut with Delta Sigma Theta of New Orleans and was Miss Kappa Alpha Phi in 1980. Queen Zulu, Sharon Jackson, a very big day, and she looks pretty today. A big smile from the queen. Queen Zulu. I, and I, and I got to tell you, those are the most elaborate headdresses. I said that earlier, but that's really true. I, I've never seen uh, the Zulu headdresses look as nice and be as uh, elaborate as they are this yeah, year. Yeah, beautiful, delicate feathers. Maybe four feet long feathers. Beautiful. Let's go now back to the Maskathon with Bill Yeager. Bill, what's going on? The stage. We're still in the preliminaries here as the judges decide who are going to be the final contestants. The Maskathon is sponsored by TV6, along with the Mayor's Mardi Gras Coordinating Committee, the Rex Organization, and McDonald's. And uh, they're winding up the uh, preliminary judging right now, and so I guess we need to go back to Charlie and Lynn. Okay, Bill. This is the J.S. Clark High School Band passing by now, Lynn. Right here in front of the Boston Club, getting everybody in the spirit for when Rex arrives in a little while. Popular song, Operator. We've been covering parades over the course of the week, and we've been doing Operator stuff, huh? a lot. Yeah, well, I'm dancing the whole time, you know what I mean? Right well, we're gonna, now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to a we're commercial. We're going to see this dancing here in a little while, folks. And we'll be right back after this message. <laughs> Approaching here, 
to carry on the tradition that began back in 1872. And now we can see that the King of Carnival is approaching. The lieutenants are passing by now on horseback, much as they did back in 1926. Imagine being king for a day, and that's what it is like. Okay, uh, we're going to go to Canal Street now. We'll be back here later in the day. This is Sally and Robert reporting live from St. Charles. The are not with the band, so I thought I'd show Eric a little of my twirling expertise. <laughs> anyway, we just saw the Southern University Marching Band, uh, one of the finest bands in this nation, marching bands in the country, and they're marching down Canal behind us is the first float of the Zulu Parade. King Zulu, Eddie Carter. And as you can see, uh, the crowds are still pouring back onto the street. Police have been trying, I guess in vain, yeah, to keep working. the crowds off the street. But this is an enthusiastic crowd this year on Canal Street. And uh, everybody, when somebody starts to throw something, this crowd goes nuts. And I, uh, I hope we can stay long enough with you this time to show you who's next after Queen Zulu Sharon Jackson is the Joseph S. Clark Marching Band, my alma mater. Oh, now no. we go to Sally Ann Roberts. I'm <laughs> sound. Yes, Andre. And now Rex is toasting James Cock, who is the grandson of Rex 1907. That this is the first stop that Rex will make. He will make four other stops. This is the only home that he will stop. Hey. Hey, Dad. And the reason I'm told that this is the only home where Rex will stop is because this is the only home uh, where a former Rex family continues to live on the parade route. The family members are around, and they're very, very enthusiastic about this moment. This is a bit of tradition that has been going on for quite some time, since 1908. Rex is wishing his loyal subjects a happy Mardi Gras. This scene will be repeated four times before Rex concludes his parade at the Boston Club. Do you want any history of where you are? Do you know where you are? Oh, and maybe we have a... Okay, now we're going to go back to Canal Street, Fondre Trevine. All right, Sally Ann, thanks very much. We're here with a live shot on Canal Street, and Queen Zulu has just gone by. You're watching some of the parade as it goes on. And Andre, uh, somebody just grabbed a whole load of coconuts off the Queen's float. Yeah, they grabbed them from one of the pages, one of the little kids. In fact, it was three guys. We still see them moving through the crowd, but there's not much you can do about it now. I guess not. Uh, those are pretty valuable uh, items uh, in uh, the Zulu parade, in any Mardi Gras. Now, there's a whole lot of them this year. Sally had a report there were thousands of them being given out. Yeah, well, there are two bags less to throw to the crowds right now. All right, we're looking at our shot from the Marriott, and uh, we're listening to the music of Andre Trevine's alma mater. The her, Joseph uh, S. Clark Bulldogs. <laughs> the high school band. They sound pretty good. They always did. Uh, were you ever a band member? <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> all right, but anyway, Zulu is well underway, and we're here on Canal Street, and you're watching all the festivities of the madness of Mardi Gras as it winds through downtown New Orleans. All right, let's go to a couple of commercials, and we'll be back with more of our coverage of Mardi Gras 1985. Carnival Spirit 85 will continue. The rival of King, and you can see that he's ah. dressed in his regalia, sitting on a throne as if he's the king. Look, and look on top, we've got our own Tom Stringfellow and photographer Billy Miller. Hey, guys, come on over here. Out of Africa, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the 
those guys have got a choice job sitting on top of the Big Shot. Bro. Big Shot is really enjoying himself. Assignment. What are we well, our top three hey, fellows, Barry Miller, up there on the big side, folks. <laughs> really oh, look out, folks. Let's go. Oh. You've been spotted, Alfred. <laughs> Shooting our kit, Channel 8 crew, Barry Miller and uh, Tom Stringfellow on the Big Shots club. Here comes Booker T. Booker T. Washington Senior High School Band, another favorite of the Blue Organization. And uh, exactly three years ago was the leader of this parade. What we like to do is when bands come live, they're playing music, we just let them go. <laughs> Number six, the Soulful Warriors. I want to remind everybody, this is just half, just, uh, just a part of our carnival coverage today. Ron Hunter, Bob Breck, out in Metairie, covering the crew of Argus, which I think begins today around uh, noon. We're going to them for three other reports as to what's going on out in Jefferson and in, and in Metairie as we watch the continuing procession of the crew of Zulu as it marches its way down Canal Street. Soulful Warriors, another one of those groups that has a special function, right? A special function, a Soulful Warriors' sole function is to guard and protect the king the morning of carnival and the afternoon after the parade. From our childhood this year, the Soulful Warriors, again, more coconuts. There's uh, one young lady got a coconut just as it came off. And uh, Zulu is throwing cups, cups this year off. also. Nice catch, Charlie. And there's one of those new little throws. Oh, there goes another one. There, they're like uh, little walnuts. Here, we can show Let's the Margaret uh, showed this uh, showed this earlier. There, you're looking at the people clamoring for those uh, for the coconuts. I don't think they know about the walnuts. The walnuts are kind of cute, and it's a brand new uh, brand new throw this year. It's like a little keychain. I know, it's like a little uh, keychain. I think the glitter would probably come off in your pocket. You can see uh, some of the riders motioning. Here's another Zulu officer getting out of the car. Now, for some reason, and Perhaps going into the crowd. Stop. Looks like he's going up over to the Boston Club stand for some reason. And the convertible is taking off without him. Looks like he's going into the Boston Club. I think you might be seeing a first here, folks. <laughs> Somebody from the Zulu crew going into the Boston Club. This That's... remains to be seen. Let's see. There you see uh, shot down Canal Street with more of the uh, parade rounding on the Canal Street near the, uh, the uh, uh, Louisiana Club. The Pickwick Club, rather. And... Uh, We'll be seeing the John McDonough High School Band and immediately uh, behind them, more floats from the Zulu Parade. To get a good idea of the, how the crowd has built here. If you recall when we first went on the air this morning, it was kind of, you could walk easily on Canal Street. It is definitely getting crowded now. Definitely getting very crowded as the day winds on. Let's see if we can show people this little walnut. And Margaret showed it to you earlier. And I guess we're not. We're gonna go. We're gonna switch locations and go to Clancy Dubos at Gallier Hall. Clancy. Okay, Lynn, we're here at Gallier Hall. The Zulu parade is going by. I hear y'all talking about the Zulu coconuts. I got one of mine from one of the people on the Zulu floats. As a matter of fact, it was State Representative Diana Bejwa. I didn't recognize her. Somebody behind me pointed her out. And when I went up to her to tap her on the shoulder, she saw me and handed me a Zulu cup and a Zulu coconut. And here comes another one of the floats now, number 22. It's 20,000 leagues under the sea, in keeping with the theme of stories from our childhood. And the crowd here has been very, very happy about this parade. They've been throwing a lot of trinkets. 
and that is 20,000 leagues under the sea. The music blaring, the crowd here very happy, very well behaved as well. So Lynn and Charlie, back to you. I've got my coconut. I hope you get yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Clancy. McDonough 35, you're hearing in our background. Marching off down uh, Canal Street. They've been doing a lot of marching this carnival season. Of course, it's a way, Lynn, for bands to earn money. For uh, in-town bands, uh, they can earn uh, anywhere from several hundred dollars. Uh, most of the crews pay more or less the same thing. Local bands generally get about $450 per parade. Those, that's without extra drill teams or extra units. And out-of-town bands generally get about $650. Let's go back to Bourbon Street now with Bob Krieger and Buddy Delberto. Okay, here we are back on Bourbon Street among the natives. Tell us, what is it? This is great. This is the Wagusi Warriors. Wandering the Wagusi, Wagusi Warriors. Wagusi Warriors. How long have you been doing it? 15 A years. A lifetime. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's part of Mardi Gras. This is it. This is where it's all at. All right. What about the crowds? You've been marching for a while. We've been on St. Charles Street. St. Charles was real crowded. Canal Street was real crowded. We're getting into bourbon now. Okay, we'll man. We're spending the rest of the time in a quarter. Okay. Hi, Mom. Good seeing you, buddy. Hi, Hi, Mom. We're going to go ahead and pitch it back to whoever right now. Okay. Back on Canal Street with the Zulu Parade. You're looking at float number seven, which is the Witch Doctor float, another of the big top officials of the Zulu organization. This year, the Witch Doctor is Albert J. Luke of Avondale, Louisiana. The Witch Doctor. The Zulu crew, of course, is uh, probably one of the, uh, it is one of the oldest crews in the city. As we said earlier, it was formed in 1909. It's really based on a musical comedy entitled The Smart Set at the Pythian Temple. You hear us tell the story every year, but it bears repeating. And the early Zulu Social Aid and Pleasure Club, as it is officially called, was actually incorporated more along the lines of an old insurance company. Uh, the members uh, paid their dues. The old insurance burial society. The members paid their Zulu dues weekly. And in the event of illness, they received weekly funds until they recovered. And upon death, they were provided with a funeral that included a jazz band. But of course, the main focus of Zulu has always been its parade here on Carnival. And, and this is its 64th parade. Its top priority, just like everybody else today, is having fun and, and passing a good time, to use a good Cajun phrase. That's right. Which Zulu starts awfully early in the morning, Mardi Gras morning. They started this morning at the Hotel Iberville, where they had rooms set up for all the makeup application, which is very, very involved. Zulu, of course, pokes fun at the, the monarch of merriment, Rex, on this day. It was started as, as more buffoonery, and more buffoonery the better has always been Zulu's motto. Of course, there's a lot of society attached with Zulu. They have their own ball and their own uh, coronation dance, and it is quite elaborate. And there are parties, as we talked about earlier, that go on all year. There's the witch doctor again. It wasn't too long ago that Zulu actually didn't follow a parade route. They just sort of meandered here and there and anywhere they wanted to go. And now, of course, they follow the same parade route that Rex will be following later in the day. That's true. You know, the, the, the city put up with that until Zulu got so big that they finally said, OK, now look, <laughs> you got to have a route and you got to <laughs> stick to a time schedule just like all the other parades. And uh, that has been a number of years ago now. And uh, they have, and they have proved to be very popular over the years. Uh, less, uh, less zany, perhaps, but at least as colorful and, and much more entertaining. I can remember covering Zulu as a young reporter here in town. And uh, it, was, it, it barely consisted of just a couple of floats and, uh, and uh, the press corps in the back of a pickup truck. But now it's Charlie, changed. Charlie, you're talking about being a young reporter. What ever happened to the Mardi Gras Indians, the Chapatulas? and all of those groups. They're out there. They generally are not seen on Canal Street, Lynn, but I promise you they're out there parading around and have been since dawn. And we'll be back with more on Mardi Gras 1985 <laughs> right after this. Before Gallagher Hall. We've seen some strange sights at Gallagher Hall, too. Some wonderful um, costumes. Jim Singleton right now, who is not in costume, but who annually MCs the Zulu Parade. Uh, but Mrs. Morial was up there, and she looked absolutely stunning. Hopefully we'll get a shot of her later. 
uh, in a gorgeous golden Aztec queen outfit. It was beautiful. Angela, our producer, uh, Chris uh, Slaughter is helping us out today. He's got the tape that we had taken earlier of the uh, little guys that had come by and their drill team. Oh, Chris, great. if we can roll that. This is what we were talking about. We see these kids every year. Obviously not just these kids. They bring it. There must be an age limit to them because we because never see anybody yeah. over eight or nine, ten years old at the very most. But they do this all along the parade route. There's no stopping and resting and, and standing. Uh, they were doing this when the parade had stalled. And see the gentleman out towards the outer perimeter there, the very tall man? He's the one that's in charge of them every year. And they obviously really respond to him. I waved to the littlest one who's in the very front. Yeah. And he started to wave back, but it was as if they had been told, don't wave, just, just perform. Dirk just Anderson precious. was down in the middle of that uh, carrying cables and shooting that. We thank him for it. Again, one of the Zulu floats, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, let's go back to Veterans Highway and talk to Judy and John. Still having a good time? Still having a good time, Angela, and I want you to know that I expect one of those coconuts a little later on. Judy is out in the crowd looking for Bill Elder. Uh, we haven't seen any. If he's anywhere, he apparently is not in Jefferson Parish. Uh, no one's heard from him today. If you hear anything from him, let us know, I guess. Uh, we're in sort of a different stage of the uh, Mardi Gras Carnival Day celebration today. Uh, uh, you've seen some of the parade on uh, the other end here. The, the anticipation is still... Uh, mounting people are still waiting to get their first glimpse of the big Argus parade which rolls with 21 floats strong in just oh about a half an hour from now it will start and get to this location in another hour or an hour and a half and we'll bring all the highlights of that to you Judy is out of the crowd with uh, some people who have uh, dressed up and let any sign of Bill Elder Judy no sign of Bill Elder but I'm standing here with four real clowns no kidding but you're not gonna believe this I am standing with Frank and Adelaide from New Jersey. What are you doing here besides dressing up? I hope you're dressed up anyway. We just want to have a chance to act crazy and not be recognized. <laughs> <laughs> what would your friends say if they saw you today? I don't know, but um, this is an experience. This is this your first Mardi Gras? It sure is. <laughs> I wouldn't mind coming again. This is a lot of fun. When are you coming back? Definitely. We're having a ball. I understand you're with some friends here who are from Mandeville. Give me your name. Joyce and Vince. Is this, this isn't your first Mardi Gras. No, this is our third. But you have. Yeah. Get, getting, getting deluged. The crowd is really, really building. I, I should tell you, there is absolutely no room to walk between the crowd and, and the, the small area that is left for the floats and the, and the marchers to pass here on Canal Street. It is absolutely packed. And Zulu. if they're estimating a half million people in Metairie, I don't know. I can't figure crowds, but I've got to think a million people? Well, it, it's, it's probably pretty early to tell because uh, it's still a little early in the day, even yeah. though it is uh, getting on uh, 1130. Uh, Rex won't be here for about another hour, and that is usually the high point of the day. When Rex turns on to Canal Street, that's usually when the police and uh, various other people make their official estimates of the crowd. They, you got a pretty good idea. Canal Street is not as crowded as it used to be 10, 15, 20 years ago. Well, also, we have, we have crowds of people going all the way from Lee Circle down St. Charles Avenue all the way to Napoleon as well. And uh, so not everyone is in the CBD and the French Quarter. They are way uptown as well, enjoying the Zulu and Rex. And of course, the trucks, the truck parades that follow Rex. And now there will be hundreds and hundreds of Elks and Crescent City trucks later in the afternoon. And, and also, Lynn, in addition to uh, Carnival here, there's an umbrella is parading on the West Bank. And of course, Mike and Andre are reporting from St. Bernard. Let's go back to Fat City now with Ann and Alec. Alec? Yeah, there's a big parade start. There'll be a big parade starting out this way, too. And Ann Mulligan and I are all set to cover it. The crew of Argus starting around Clearview about 2 o'clock. About noon should be here about 2 o'clock. Right, as we mentioned, uh, 22 floats and 21 marching bands. And, you know, from just standing up here and looking at all that's going on, we don't even need a parade. There's just so much happening right around us. It's a parade going by. We're watching the stream of humanity from the Metairie area just walking by here. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like watching a show going on all the time. And I would say the Metairie people have incredible imagination when it comes to costumes. There you can see some of the characters behind us. And just a little while ago, we had 60 cockroaches coming by. The Stiegler family having a lot of fun out here. So we have 21 floats. Herb Kamat is the, uh, going to be the, the king of Argus. By the way, their first king this year. The queen is Michelle Shane. 
and we'll be bringing you the whole parade in just a little bit when it starts, so stay with us. <laughs> okay, back to you folks. Okay, you're looking at pictures of Bourbon Street now, which is very crowded. This is immediately across from the uh, Royal Sinesta Hotel, and it is about getting about as jammed as it can be, Lynn. I don't know how they can squeeze one more body on Bourbon Street today. <laughs> I thought Canal right. Street was crowded, and I know somewhere down there must be Bob Krieger and Buddy Deliberto, no oh. doubt having... Someone just threw a coconut to Charles, <laughs> not... He didn't catch he it. He didn't throw that, he just... He just it gently. just sort of <laughs> leapt onto our stand here. We, we will show you get anybody in trouble. a little while later. This is, this is a, a pipe and drums of New Orleans <laughs> passing, passing the Boston Club right now. The riders in the parades this year, as we watch the, uh, the pipes and drums in New Orleans go by, the riders in the parades this year have, have really been exercising their arms, folks. Let me tell you, I, I know Lynn has a couple of cuts, and I have I a had a of busted cuts. lip. Charlie had a big egg on his head. I'm not calling you an egghead, Charlie. Right. An egg all right, on all your right, head. All right. All right. <laughs> The the uh, the riders have been quite generous. We have found this year, oh, and yes. also quite strong. Yes, I think they've all been working out as part of the new health <laughs> kit this year. <laughs> we have felt their wrath. Uh, in fact, one gentleman in a parade last night threw a bottle of Dr. Tishner's at somebody. It's uh, at, Steve Bellis. That's right. That could have been a dangerous situation. People now are not float, supposed to throw that. Float number eleven, Tom Sawyer, and this is actually the governor float for Zulu, the governor of Zulu Land. Anthony Mercadell. something oh. new a wallet charlie just got hit in the head with the wallet <laughs> <It is. laughs> and while he's recovering let's switch to lee circle and dan and meg <laughs> not really here we're in the twilight zone for show. some people this is the most fun of all this is like the crew of interim here this is this is what happens between zulu and rex we have some we have some out of towners here these are northerners they come down here all the way from mandeville every year for Mardi Gras. What's it like coming all the way down here from Mandeville? Hey, it's a party, I'm going to tell you. Is absolutely. it real cold up there in the north? Oh, uh, it's in terribly Mandeville? freezing. The snow is, is heavy. Oh. The snow is heavy. Well, you must be happy to be down here. Are you from Mandeville, too? Yes, I am. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Gee, uh, tell all the folks back home we wish they could all come down. All right. They have a parade. Do they have a parade in Mandeville? I don't know. Well, you're not there to see it anyway. So there. There. <laughs> Thanks a lot for happy coming. Happy Mardi Gras. You too. Happy Mardi Gras. There was a, there's a couple walking around with a little with a, a, a grocery store cart called a Marty Bar, and they're serving here in the middle of the street from the Marty Bar. Hi, what's your name? Renee. Is that Renee? What a gorgeous costume you have. Thank you. Are you you're from New Orleans? Oh, yeah. Why did I know year. that? Every year we mask from Mardi Gras. And walk right down to Canal Street, don't you? <laughs> no, we stay right here. Oh, you do? Right here by the YMCA. That's a nice place to be. We come here. Margaret and I come here every year ourselves. Yeah. And look, who is this? Here's Dan, the uh, scarecrow out in front of us here. You from New Orleans? Uh, Kenner, sir. From Kenner? Yes, That's sir. nice to have you down here. You don't mask out in Metairie? Uh, Come on down here? Well, this is uh, about five years since I've been downtown. So, yeah. So, um, oh, I this is like your it. first time uh, back down here in five years? Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome back. It's good to have you. Thank you. Make it by the Maskathon on Canal Street. We'll do that. Right, go on by later on. <laughs> See, what happened is they just noticed the camera. <laughs> and that's all I have to tell you. Let's go back to Canal Street and see if it's as rowdy over there. Oh, it's plenty rowdy. They're looking at float number 13, the littlest mermaid, Dan, and everybody else. And and riding this float is Milton Bienemy, who is the governor and has been one of the movers and shakers in the Zulu organization for years. We have some more interesting throws. Zulu has really been very creative. Look at this Zulu back scratcher. Oh, Is Russians like to be scratched. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta Scratching tell you, back. you see this hat? Before the day is over, it's gonna get knocked off, folks. It's a, <laughs> it's a plenty good target for the people on, <laughs> on the track. And let's go back to the French Quarter on Bourbon Street with Buddy Deliberto and Bob Krieger. Here we are on Bourbon Street. Once again, as you can see, it's getting to be wall-to-wall -wall people down here. Everybody having a good time. You wouldn't believe that this crowd is as nice as it is big. Everybody's just, just being nice, and that's it's wonderful like, for Mardi Gras. It's like the world's fans getting a lot of costumes this year. Like right here. Now, we have, we have some of these costumes, for instance. We have the crew of World's Fair creditors standing uh, back here, the crew of World's Fair creditors. We have the crew of Saints' number one draft choice, uh, crew of Saints stockholder. The crew of Government Ethics, starring the King Ed Meese. We have the Wonderwall, the Wonderwall Wrecking Crew, 
And all of these clues were intended by New Orleans. I'm watching Yeah. And we have and we have some Channel Six fans down here. Absolutely. Look at that, Jason. Buddy, I want your shoe every day. You got to love the Saints' number one draft choice. Well, I love it. I love it. I guarantee you. Bob, the tempo's sticking up right now. Everybody's getting into the swing of it, huh? Oh, yeah, it's terrific down here. It really is. I'll tell you what. If you're at home watching and you want to come out and see a good Mardi Gras, come on out to this one. you got a lot of time and come on down to Bourbon Street. Let's go back now to Canal Street. Lynn and Charlie. Thanks, Bob and Buddy. We are on float number 14 in the Zulu Parade. The Frog Prince, the Sheriff, featuring Percy Morris. I'm not sure. They might have lost a couple of members or part of this float. I'm not quite sure. Not quite as elaborate as the previous floats we've been seeing. Well, you know, maybe the others are uh, are out partying somewhere. Like, you know, <laughs> Zulu, the Zulu day is a long day, and uh, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to concentrate on <laughs> in the course of the day. Float number 14, the Frog Prince. Now here's a well-staffed float, number 15, the Odyssey. And it is beautiful. Look at that coconut. She, there's one of the new uh, style coconuts. There oh, we go, right off the floor. And it's lost to the crowd. Somebody's got a real collector's item there. Mister, throw us a coconut. Very interesting costumes. That was a really nice one going by. Here again oh. is uh, the Zulu Parade continuing down the Zulu Snake Charmer, making its way toward the Boston Club, where we are. Zulu floats don't always necessarily go along with the theme, Len. They, uh, Zulu <laughs> rents a good many of its floats. <laughs> Gets and a good I, deal I on an old float. I don't think Henry VIII here had anything to do with snake charming, to, to, as far as my reading of English history goes. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm dressed in the 16th century. <laughs> Henry VIII was around, and, and I do not recall any snake charming. No, you're absolutely right. And, and no, maybe, maybe they're making reference he was a snake. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> Float number 16, the snake charmer, who is uh, Zany Brasley, up there on that float. And here come the beads off the float. Uh, oh, just God. got a spear. Thank you, sir. Glad we caught that crossways. <laughs> <laughs> now, another one of the fine marching units in the Zulu parade from this year. This is the Landry High School Band from right here in New Orleans. Landry High School, let's listen. down Canal Street to the delight of the people who are, who are awaiting the rest arrival here on Canal Street and of course they're being entertained by the 1985 Zulu Parade now. Float number 17, the Tribal Chiefs, King Midas. As I said earlier, it takes a lot of work for these riders to prepare themselves for riding the Zulu Parade. You'll see in Rex and other other parades that they simply put, riders simply put a mask on. Each and every rider, about 350 of them, paint their faces. A lot of work. Let's now go. let's go to Fat City with Ann and Alex. And here is one of the marching clubs from Jefferson Parish, which is going by your camera right now as Mardi Gras in Metairie begins to heat up in these few hours before noon. And this is just the beginning because the crew of Argus is waiting to put on some kind of show. This is the Turnbull Social Club going by right now, and this is the Grand Marshal of the parade. Let's meet the Grand Marshal for just one second. What's your name, sir? Jim Warren. How Jim you doing, Warren, Alec? Jim who is the Grand Marshal of the Turnbull Social and Pleasure Club. Huh? Oldest marching group in the parish and the best. Hey, thanks for coming <laughs> by our cameras. Thank you very it. much, have Alex. Have fun, have fun. It's for you, oh, and you know you. what you have to do for this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alex, look. Don't <laughs> give me one. He's not only a great marshal up. He's the Turnbull's greatest. He was the greatest since Joe Yenny trained him when he was a kid. She played ball with Joe Yenny in Canada. That is true. Hey, y'all have fun. Glad to see Alex, you by thank here. Thank you very much. You enjoyed okay. yourself. Oh, thank you. 
I think with this, we better uh, head back downtown. <laughs> <laughs> and Mullen, you've got a kiss. <laughs> See you all later. Come on back out here as soon as that parade starts, okay? You know what? Like she got more than a kiss. She also got some bikinis. Here now, the Zulu <laughs> Parade on Canal Street in uh, float number 19, which is the ugly ducking, duckling. <laughs> and I hadn't had a darn thing to drink yet this morning. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> we'll get you something. <laughs> the ugly duckling. By the way, do you know where that tradition of giving out the paper flowers comes from, Lynn? No. In exchange for a kiss? Well, when the, the earliest marching crew was the Jefferson City Buzzards, and right. uh, they're out on the streets and have been out on the streets along with Pete Fountain and the marching groups of Jefferson Parish. Anyway, it just, it's, it weighs too much to carry beads and doubloons around. Sure. But uh, even long before there were beads and doubloons, it was uh, one of the things uh, that you could go out and give favors to the crowd. The paper flower. The paper flower, and in return you got a kiss from a pretty girl. And of course that, that tradition has now been incorporated in, in the Irish St. Paddy's Day parades that we see, the marching clubs all over town. It's one of the truly nice things about uh, about the marching clubs here in the city, and they, they go back just as far, in fact, a little further than uh, than the parading crews, the uh, the crews like Rex and Zulu and uh, everybody else. They are the oldest form of Mardi Gras celebrated in New Orleans. Here again now, more of the Zulu parade, float number 20. The civil judge. Peter Pan, keeping in with the stories of our childhood. Big statue of Peter Pan standing in the front. And Diane Mack, who's been riding the Zulu parade, has just joined us and will be with us shortly to tell us about some of her experiences. Diane, welcome. Tell us about your ride with Zulu this morning. How did it go? <laughs> You're worn out. It was a scene out there, but it was the, 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 the greatest thing I've ever done. It's a whole different perspective when you're on the float than when you're on the ground saying, hey, mister, throw me something. It was wonderful. How did the day begin? The day began uh, a little disappointing for Zulu. Uh, they Here. wanted to take the traditional ride on the cotton blossom up the river, but the fog was so heavy this morning that they uh, could not the boats could not leave. So they went on the boat and they had a small ceremony. And after that, it was time to board the floats. And that's what we've been doing all morning long. Now there's a picture of the float you were on. What float number were you on? That was float number 18. It was called Beauty and the Beast, the Merrymakers. And what a wonderful time we had. They let me throw coconuts, the blooms, beets. It was wonderful. <laughs> These pictures, of course, were shot by Arnie Bourgeois, I believe. Yes, they were. You get an idea. This looks like it's along St. Charles Avenue. Where, what uh, a crowd. How would you estimate the crowd? Was it thick? Was it consistently it thick the thick. entire way? I would way? say there were about 20, 25 deep, and everybody was on the float. Hey, mister, throw me a coconut. Can I have a coconut, please? How the many coconuts, coconuts were on your particular float? They didn't tell me. Uh -huh. They had crate loads, boxes and boxes and boxes. The, the, the uh, things that went fastest were the coconuts, of course. They had uh, go cups. They had two kind, three kinds this year, a yellow one, a black one, and a... Uh, a white one depicting uh, childhood stories. Uh, they had a bank, a new Zulu bank. A so Zulu can bank. Collect money for next year and have <laughs> them affordable. <laughs> That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Well, Diane, thank you very much. I'm sure it was a great experience. It was. Maybe it one day was. Charlie and I will be fortunate enough to ride on Mardi Gras Day. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Look forward to your report at 6 o'clock. Diane Mack, and we're here. Zulu is still passing in front of the Boston Club. Uh, float number 22, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Induna. Induna this year uh, is, of course, another one of the uh, uh, Zulu officials. Uh, Induna is Ivory uh, Bullock. Look at that great big octopus or calamari <laughs> it's gonna be calamari it's not calamari until it gets to the restaurant <laughs> can't you see that little pink and purple guy with some great tomato sauce on him no i think i'm getting hungry charlie <laughs> <laughs> all this work <laughs> we've got quite a stint to go here but we just need to get hungry now the zulu parade held up temporarily here on canal street uh, you see the people begging for coconuts and uh, spears tambourines cups back scratchers <laughs> you name it just about anything they can uh, they can get off uh, we just saw a shot of zulu tossing to the boston club balcony the queen and her court has not yet come out 
I don't know if they are still eating, if they're just relaxing, because she has a very, very full day ahead of her. Her day will not end till way after midnight tonight when, when Rex and Comus meet at Municipal Auditorium. And of course, she'll be able to see that live on TV6 tonight. If you're looking at uh, family members, uh, wives, here's the uh, Ross Volunteers as they make their way around Lee Circle. These are the lead elements of the Rex Parade. And they're just now turning Lee Circle, and Le Rex is running about on time. Uh, the Rex Parade is due here uh, at or about 12.30. And uh, these, of course, are the traditional lead units of the Rex Parade, the Ross Volunteers. Now, Rex will make a number of stops before he finally reaches our point, five or six stops. He will toast us along St. Charles Avenue. Of course, the mayor will toast him at Gallier Hall. This is and a couple of other stops before the Boston Club. According to the Rex timing sheet, Rex was due at uh, Lee Circle at 11.37, 3.3 miles into the route today of five and a half miles. And uh, they're right on time, the lead units here. And there you're looking back up St. Charles Avenue with some of the riding lieutenants. And there he is, our first look at Vaughn Graham, Rex in 1985, uh, waving to the crowd, blowing kisses. He'd be making his way around uh, St. Charles Avenue, a little bit closer look now. Uh, H. Devon Graham, Jr., the chairman of the board of Arthur Anderson, today the king of carnival, the man who is a household word for a day. Father of Elizabeth and father of Vaughn Graham III. Elizabeth was a maid. Vaughn III was a duke in previous Rex courts, but Vaughn never dreamed he would be king. When he gets to the uh, to Gallier Hall, where Clancy uh, Dubos is, of course, Clancy's playing the role today of Cardinal Politico. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be uh, officially toasting the city. That is his uh, traditional and official toast to the city. And the mayor will be uh, welcoming Rex and turning the keys of the city over to Rex's rule for the day. And uh, then he, in turn, will be uh, toasting the mayor and the city council and the other various political officials who were gathered at Gallier Hall. Rex 1985, H. Devon Graham, and now back live on Canal Street. With the Zulu parade continuing here, it's almost coming to an end now. This is float number 24, Asiqui. Or Little Red Riding Hood. Right. <laughs> Asikwe being the, uh, the Zulu the Zulu term. Zulu telling stories of our childhood this year. That's a pretty face. Zulu. Where's the wolf? Well, I think there are probably a lot of wolves out here today, <laughs> don't you think? So. Oh, yes. Yes. I think Bob Krieger and Buddy Deliberto have seen a lot of wolves in the French Quarter. Doris Roberts will be joining us again. Of course, she was with us earlier. She's from Remington Steel, and she's been down at our maskathon. She'll be joining us a little later with her impressions. She's it here at our stand. It never fails to amaze me how people who, who are from out of town each year come to Carnival and are amazed at first when they see their first parade uh, about why everybody's jumping up and down trying to get these trinkets. And then after a couple of floats go by, they get into it just like everybody else and throw uh, and, and get into the hunt. It's so infectious. I mean, it's a contagious spirit here. This is float number 25, trip to the moon, Mandingo. Again, they're tempting the, uh, the people with the spears and everything and throwing the bees off. They're also using bikinis. Bikinis are very popular uh, throwing items, uh, throwing apparel this year. Float number 26, Scheherazade. Of course, Scheherazade, the temptress on the front, front of that float. Failed. Hey, somebody got a coconut. Snatched more than, <laughs> than awarded. Thank you. I think Zulu has been quite generous this year. They have come well equipped. Their floats stocked with throws. Here comes Cinderella, float number 27. The Lady Zulus. Again. And I see lots of coconuts there, Charles. <laughs> Some of them a little bit more simple. Just a very simple gold coconut with with glittered 85 on them. But people will take anything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Anything. In Dimian this year, another coconut offer and lost to the crowd. 
and Dimming this year, as, as you know, and as everybody else knows, on the various carnival crews this year. And there was a Zulu float in that, and it was highly sought after. And we'll be back with more of... Mardi Gras coverage, 1985, right after this. in Louisiana by a lot of Louisiana sportsmen. That's right. And this is one of the uh, one of the floats in the Zulu parade where all the, the uh, maskers are more or less in the same costume. And again, there's spears and coconuts and uh, all sorts of things coming off that float right now. Those are cute little ears they have coming out of their costume. I think Zulu has really outdone itself this year. These are the Zulu shadows. Tossing uh, cups right in front of the Boston Club stand. And this Carnival. is virtually the end of the Zulu parade. And the only thing uh, bringing up the rear here is the uh, Charlie Foti Victory Against Crime truck. Sponsored by Criminal Sheriff Charles Foti. Featuring caricatures of the Jackson family. Of course, some of the family did come down to help Charles Foti kick off his Victory Against Crime campaign. There was talk about the Jacksons coming back and participating with some of the sheriff's deputies on their baseball team. I don't know what has come of that. I know that the Jacksons have not been back in town. We would have known. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> if they were playing a baseball game, I think we might have known about it. The fog has really lifted here on Canal Street. It is a wonderful, nice, I slightly cool Mardi Gras day. Aerial shots of... Canal. There you see the uh, the Zulu Parade, the early elements of the Zulu Parade. Uh, right uh, there's the Maison Blanche building going by. And out from behind the Maison Blanche building, you see the Friend Dennis Club uh, as the uh, Zulu Parade goes by there. Some idea of how big the crowd really is. Of course, as you said, this was a couple of hours ago. About an hour ago. Maybe an hour ago. And the crowd is much more dense than these pictures are indicating. Looking back toward the river now on Canal Street, uh, you can see the, uh, that's probably Southern University Band. That is the Southern University Band. There you see Zulu uh, making his way down toward uh, the Sanger in that area. Again, this is St. Charles Avenue now. And then on to Canal Street. This gives you an idea of the mass of humanity that has converged on New Orleans this morning. The uh, this is looking down into the French Quarter now, into uh, on the Bourbon Street, and uh, some of the crowd there where Bob Krieger and uh, Buddy Deliberto are. And uh, again, we're back live uh, on uh, Canal Street with some of the people. Uh, our security guard is going to do <laughs> yeoman's duty here today. <laughs> The loud music you hear is the music coming from the Victory Against Crime van. Let's switch to Lee Circle with Dan and Margaret Orr. Oh, let me tell you, this is where the action is. We're at Lee Circle. Some loud music, huh? St. Augustine High School band, the Purple Knights, they are parading and performing what music? We just, we've had seven of the Rex floats go by now. The, the uh, Royal Point Siena has just gone by. And uh, coming up will be a, a live animation float that is just turning the corner onto Lee Circle now. In fact, you can probably see it behind, around and behind the St. Aug Band. And this is an animated float, the Emperor Swan. And you can, from here, you can just see some of the movement on the floor. Just barely see. Dan, the theme this year is nature's royalty. But I tell you, um, St. Aug Band is one of my favorites. They I always like fun. to see them performing. They are some fun. Aren't they great? Some of you that were at the Endymion oh. Extravaganza may recall seeing the uh, Southern Band and the St. Aug Band in the same parade. There was some hot music going on. Oh, let me tell you. Here they go. They're going to start moving off again. We should talk about the theme of uh, nature's royalty because they're saluting so many of the animals that you can see at Ottoman Zoo. It's not only the animals, but they're also saluting the flowers, the plants, every, everything in nature. It is, and, and they really have, again, some very nice poses. And we've noticed some new and very beautiful costumes as the riders go by. Dan, I've got to tell you, though, when they go by, I've just got to dance. It's, it's hard to talk and dance at the same He's time. He's got at the time in the Lee Circle. Did you hear what they're playing? Have you ever seen such rhythm and movement in your life? They've got what 
what makes New Orleans great. that they stopped right in front of us. Anyway, that's it for now. There's a lot going on on Bourbon Street. Let's check in with Buddy and Bob. Hey. Okay, we're back on Bourbon Street right now. It's really hooking up. Look what we got here. All right, girls. All right, how you doing? Huh? How you doing? Oh, I tell you, this is a lot better than covering the Saints, Bob. Right, this is oh, much better man. than covering the Saints, is it? Absolutely. This is the best Mardi Gras there has ever been. Okay, now look. They lose weight, ask me how. Is that for real? Yeah. 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 Come on, let's do a little two shot. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right, Robert. That's a two step, bud. Two step. Put my grandma boots on. All right. Oh, come on. Come on in. Come on, look at that. Talk to this lady anymore, buddy? Talk to her right now. Okay, buddy's gonna take her off down the street and talk to her. And, and we're gonna go back to Canal Street right now. Lynn and Charlie. Hey, Bob, thank you much. I didn't know Buddy could move like that, did you? <laughs> Boogie Buddy. <laughs> The man has moves we have not yet seen before, folks. <laughs> and I'm sure as the day wears on, we are going to see more moves. Those are some of the contestants in the TV6 Maskathon. Contestant 200, so you know it's been a great turnout today. Oh, tremendous. It has been tremendous. And look at the sun. The sun is starting to peek through. I don't know if you can tell at home, but uh, I told you. Did you did. You say, right you at did. about noon, here noon, comes Rex. And here, at, at noon. And speaking of noon, uh, there's Abraham Rex, Lincoln. <laughs> what's he doing here? Rex should be toasting at Gallier Hall. He has not yet arrived at Gallier Hall. Just a little bit behind schedule, but nothing to speak of, really. Nothing, nothing really to speak of. Uh, not when you consider by. all of the uh, everything that is involved in getting this Mardi Gras together. We will tell you more about this Mardi Gras right after this. Before you let some clown sell you his chicken nuggets, try ours, Church's Crispy Nuggets. In case you haven't noticed, that other guy has only one flavor. But Church's has two, regular and spicy. Both are light and crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. And Church's Crispy Nuggets come with a choice of four delicious sauces. So why settle for a one-flavor nugget when you can have regular or spicy? Remember, any clown can make a nugget, but only Church's gives you a choice. Mystique, Majesty, Masking, Mardi Gras. TV6 invites you to the Mardi Gras Maskathon. Be there as the best and most outrageous costumes are selected this Fat Tuesday. Come on down to the 400 block of Canal Street and join the fun beginning at 2. The Mardi Gras Maskathon, brought to you by the Mayor's Mardi Gras Committee, the Rex Organization, McDonald's, and TV6. Loves Mardi Gras. I've got a message from my neighbors and friends in Slidell, a life and death message. Accidents or heart attacks can happen to anyone you love, so you must be prepared to help, to get that heart beating again. You must know CPR. North Shore Regional Medical Center teaches CPR. The classes are free and don't take long. Knowing CPR can mean the difference between saving a loved one's life or losing it. Please call now. North Shore Regional Medical Center, making the North Shore independently healthy. Here come the newlyweds. You'll laugh when man and wife team up to win. In the car in front of his parents' house. That's right. Yes. And lose. I do not. You're in and out. Fire. Okay, I admit I'm wrong. With grace. He said 10. <laughs> and style. He said you're sexy with something on. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Aren't we having a good time? <laughs> Let the newlyweds win you over. Weekdays at 4 on TV6. 
Back live now in Canal Street, Charles Zee, we with Lynn Ganser, and we're, we're being joined by uh, former Rex, former King of Carnival, Ulysses Nolan, who we'll be talking to shortly. But let's take a look, first of all, at the man of the hour, who is, of course, H. Devon Graham, Jr., Rex, 1985. As he began his day today at the Den, our Mark Phillips was there. Rex 1985, H. Devon Graham, arrived at the Rex Den this morning in his jogging outfit. He came straight from the King's Run in Audubon Park, which of course he won. After a quick shower, it was time to get dressed in his royal robes and boots, all the while receiving greetings from crew members, former Kings, and well-wishers. It takes about two hours to dress the King. There's an occasional pause to allow Rex a chance to catch his breath and regain his cool. Good. It gets hot underneath all those garments. And prior to his crowning, Rex 1985 is toasted by some of the former Kings of Carnival. We have greetings for you. We're glad that your direction finder found your way down here to the club this morning. And we drink to your health, but you have a long reign with no rain. <laughs> We look forward to a great ride. I'm ably assisted by two super pages. And so, here's to Rex. With toasting complete, there's just some final preparations, like placing the crown on Rex's head. And the reign of Devon Graham as King of Carnival begins. A great day, and the, the rains, the, the clouds are clearing. We're going to have a super day. We're all excited about going. Charlie and Lynn, I think it's interesting to point out that as Rex begins his reign over Carnival 85, the Rex organization has already completed its plans for next year's party. Okay, we are standing by now in front of Gallia Hall, and Rex has arrived. Here is Rex, 1985, arriving at Gallia Hall for the traditional historic toast. Rex will toast the city. And the city, represented by the mayor, Mayor Morial, will toast Rex, oh, King of there. Carnival. There you see Rex. You. you got it? Preparing for his speech making. This is a tradition that is carried on hey, every year at Carnival and in front of On this Hall. your day, Here's mayor as Morial. we turn our magnificent city over to you, and as you ride gloriously through our city, I know you will observe the character and the climate of our people and what great day this is and what they have to offer. As we lift our glass to you on this day and say, Hail Rex, pro bono publico, let us all remember that we all work for the good of the public and for the good of our great city. Hail Rex! traditional smashing of the champagne glasses. To you on this yard day, Rex, this memento of your reign, and hope that it continues to open all doors of access for all of the people of our city in a spirit of pro bono publico. And now... Exchanging of gifts between the mayor and Rex, King of Carnival. 
a long-standing Thank tradition you. here at Gallia Hall. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rex, the King of Carnival, stopping in front of Gallia Hall for the salute and toast with the mayor, exchanging of gifts and greetings. As he begins, actually not beginning, this is all. This is sort of a beginning for Rex because it marks the beginning of, and the renewal, I should say, of a long-standing tradition. And as he rolls off, let's go back to Canal Street with Charlie and Lynn, where Rex will make his next stop to toast the Queen of Carnival. And Clancy, while we watch Rex rolling off down St. Charles Avenue, if we can stick with that picture for a moment, Ulysse Nolan is with us now. Could you explain who the little girl was? The little girl is an orphan, and she is the guest of the man. Greeted by Rex, yes. and she in turn gives a gift to Rex, and Rex in turn reciprocates and gives her a gift. Is this tradition as old as Rex? This is a very old tradition. It uh, originated years and years ago. Now you are Rex 1977, Mr. Nolan. What is going through Von Graham's mind right now? Right now, he's dazzled. Right now, <laughs> he most probably feels that. Uh, well, he never thought he'd ever be here, and being here, he just is making the most of it, trying to be as gracious as he can, and that's not very difficult because everybody loves Rex on, a, on Carnival Day. Just he, taking it all in. He's not an individual on Carnival Day. He represents a character that is beloved by the people of New Orleans, and, and so consequently, he just has a marvelous time all day long. Well, Ulysses, you were telling me a story about the mayor before, a mayor Shakespeare, who used to, was a king of carnival. That must have been pretty unique. Yeah, that is unique. Uh, back in the early 1880s, uh, he was mayor of the city of New Orleans and also Rex. And an interesting thing, uh, when uh, the Grand Duke Alexis was here, uh, Mayor Flanders was here, and the governor, Walmouth, and uh, General Longstreet of uh, Civil War fame was with him on the uh, halls of the, uh, uh, on the steps of City Hall, which is now Gallia Hall. So this tradition of the mayor being involved in Carnival goes back right to its very inception. What does the rest of the day hold in store for Von Graham and the court? Well, now he'll, uh, of course, he'll, he'll meet his great audience as he turns from Royal Street uh, into Canal. He'll stop at the Pickwick Club, well, he'll stop first at the Louisiana Club, and there are the red roses that he'll present to his wife uh, when he reaches the Boston Club will be placed on his float. Then he'll come down St. Charles to Canal and he'll toast the uh, Pickwick Club and they will give him the bouquet, the tricolor bouquet of green, gold, and purple, which he'll present to the Queen when he uh, arrives at the Boston Club. So he's really now just reading, reaching the peak of his parade route. And of course, he will be performing until way after midnight oh, tonight. After the parade, uh, you are told that you have a slight respite <laughs> and that you can uh, perhaps get 40 winks, but that's uh, greatly exaggerated. What happens, uh, you As you get home, the press is there, the news media is there. <laughs> oh, and as you eat lunch. Devil news media. That's right. As you eat lunch, <laughs> they interview you and they ask you to tell them any uh, outstanding uh, circumstances of your ride, any particular things that impressed you. And then right after that, you, you uh, uh, put in your raiments for the evening, which is a new costume, and your makeup is done over. And uh, then you uh, uh, host to a small gathering. And the king doesn't officially give a party, but people in his neighborhood are invited over to his home to, to meet him and greet him. And uh, then you, you're whisked off and you go back into the uh, limousine convoy and you go to the Queen's house and then they reform and come back down to Canal Street for Comus. Let me ask you, what happens after it's all over? It's, it's midnight and after the, the ball is over, the meeting of the courts is over with, what happens? Well, when do you it, finally get home? <laughs> well, you get home in the wee hours of the morning, around 3.30, and uh, the Queen's Supper the Joint Queen's Supper, uh, which is the Queen of Comus and the 
and the Queen of Carnival give a joint supper at one of the downtown hotels, and that usually lasts until 3 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, you're usually home by about 3.30. If our cameras could get a shot over the Boston Club balcony, the Queen and her court have now come out. Yes. But before we look at that, <laughs> let's take a look at some pictures of some uh, people who will be celebrating into the wee hours of the morning on <laughs> Bourbon right. Street, uh, where they've been celebrating oblivious of what's going on here on Canal is. Street. And look at that. that uh, you're talking about teeming humanity, Lynn. It is another world. It is another world of Bourbon Street. You have to be here to believe it. I got to tell you, though, I walked down Bourbon Street last night, and, I, and the, the yuppies, as they say, <laughs> have arrived at Carnival. The crowds were generally better dressed, you know, designer jeans, et cetera, et cetera. They were generally older. You didn't see as many youngsters with backpacks. That's right. Um, you didn't see as many uh, scruffy types as you Barefoot, did. Barefoot, that's right. And, uh, and beer is the drink. Wine is apparently out this year. I didn't see any wine skins. <laughs> designer beer, right? Designer, designer beer. The, yupp the yuppies have come to Carnival this year, folks. And uh, there, those are live pictures from our position on Bourbon Street, which is in the uh, 300 block of Bourbon Street, right across from the Royal Sinesta Hotel, uh, and next door to Mahogany Hall and Edison Park. If you want to be exactly situated on Bourbon Street. Again, I don't see how one more person can fit on Bourbon Street. That is a capacity crowd. It seems <laughs> standing room be. only. Standing room only. Right now, the uh, initial units of the Rex uh, Parade have uh, turned. Uh, the very lead units have turned onto Canal Street. And uh, they are actually now early. We were talking about the timing sheet earlier that we get from the School of Design, from the organization. And the parade is now running just uh, about five minutes ahead as it turns onto Canal Street. Uh, you're looking at uh, down toward the river toward the uh, Pickwick Club, where, uh, what happens when Rex gets to the Pickwick Club? When he least? gets to the Pickwick Club, he, uh, he toasts uh, the Pickwick Club. The president of the Pickwick Club presides. He toasts the Pickwick Club and, uh, and its members and the ladies that are on the balcony. And then he receives uh, this floral gift that he presents to his queen in the three traditional colors of green, gold, and purple. Now, some, down through the years, these toasts, do, does somebody coach you on the toasts? I mean, it's, well, all, I'm, not, I'm not being disrespectful, but uh, like uh, Vaughn Graham's toast just now at, at Gallier Hall, it, it was pro forma, and we've heard that language before. Did yes, they, they, you, we'll, we'll we get are back now, to that we, later. Yeah, we are now looking at the Queen. If Queen Mary Stuart Smallpage would turn around, we'd be able to see how pretty she looks today. She is there with her eight maids and they will be escorted by eight dukes. And also on the balcony today will be uh, Mary Stewart's mother, the queen mother, as it were, Mrs. John Benton Smallpage. And we're getting competition here a little bit from the, uh, <laughs> Some from the police trying here. to make their way down Canal Street, get the people to move back so the, uh, so the units can, uh, can get through. The maids today that will be along with Queen Small Page, <laughs> Miss Sidani Evan Schmidt, Miss Mitty Elizabeth Keller, Miss Nancy Labuis, the Elizabeth LaPere Gordon. There is the Queen. The Queen, for those who are interested, is wearing a winter white Chanel fabric suit. The side closing short jacket with exaggerated sleeves is accented with trapunto stitching, forming an impressive wing collar. The stitching was repeated on the yoke of the straight skirt. The accessories that were worn were off white shoes in purse and a matching hat and of course it is customary for a queen of carnival to wear the white suit and her maids the other eight maids wear either pastels or soft colors immediately to uh, her uh, left uh, lynn is uh, mary virginia wyman who you saw ducking in and out of the picture here and here's the crew of nopsy making its way down <laughs> these are very important fellows the fellows who uh, check the clearances for the floats uh, there was a, a problem with the, the King's float about uh, three years ago. It turned on Napoleon Avenue right in front of Southern Baptist Hospital, and whack, it caught an oak tree. Kind of ripped the, ripped the crown a little bit, but the parade did continue <laughs> and uh, made it down here fine. And uh, everybody is in place now. The parade is running right on time. And, and we'll there's be... our queen. She is quite animated this morning, having a good time. She's been waving over here, giving us a big wave. And loving every minute, as we heard her say earlier in an interview that we did last week with Mary Stewart, that she is thrilled about today, 
And when I asked about tomorrow, she said, well, she'll be relieved, but she'll be also sorry that it's all over. It's been a wonderful year for her. Ulysse, tell us how the queen is picked. Uh, it's usually generally conceded that a, a small but unnamed committee of, of the organization of the School of Design chooses who Rex is based on his civic involvement and various other things. How's the queen picked? The queen is picked by the School of Design. And she's usually uh, a formal debutante for that year. And of course, they, they look for many credentials uh, that she can offer them, like her appearance, you know, her accomplishments in school. She's usually a, a, an undergraduate. And uh, also, uh, it has a uh, distinct bearing on her family's uh, position in the Rex organization over the years. Well, without sounding crass, uh, it, people who do not know and, and most of us do not know because we are not inside the Rex organization say, well, the Queen bought her position, the Queen's father bought. Is, is there some truth to that? No, <laughs> there's no, there's no truth to that at all because actually there have been some people in very prominent positions in the so-called royalty of Carnival that uh, actually uh, the expense of uh, buying a gown and has been a burden to them even. Uh, no, wealth has nothing to do with it. And uh, that is a very, uh, I think, uh, commended, uh, commendatory uh, aspect of Carnival. And, and uh, it's surprising, um, I can't, uh, and I'm not in a position to uh, divulge it, but really how reasonable it is to be king of Carnival. It's more reasonable to be king of Carnival that's right. Then to well, be there great. are limits. We were talking about that right. before you arrived, that the organization imposes limits on what a king can spend. Oh, yes, spend. yes. It's a very, very mod modest thing, and, and uh, uh, as a result, it, it really poses no burden on a man if he's chosen, if, if he does not have the extreme means that uh, some other gentleman might have. But getting back to the court, if you if you follow the society pages, uh, for instance, the the queen to, uh, today, uh, Miss Smallpage, was a maid in the Twelfth Night Revelers. Is there some intertwining there? That goes no, on? the Twelfth Night Revelers has a very distinct uh, position in Carnival, in as much as it is that it opens the formal Carnival season. And uh, but the fact that she was in the court has no bearing whatsoever on the fact that she ultimately uh, is now divulged to be the uh, queen of the carnival. Now I'm curious about something with Twelfth Night. From what I understand, the way the queen is selected for Twelfth Night is by selecting the gold jelly bean. If she has the gold bean, then she becomes queen. Am I correct? That is correct. All right. What would have happened if Mary Stewart Smallpage, being one of the <laughs> possible girls, the, the, the other girls who do not get the gold bean are members of the court. They are maids for Twelfth Night. What would have happened had she gotten the gold bean? Is she automatically eliminated because she is queen of carnival? Mm. Or was she also a possible candidate to be no, a they, double queen? They have had... Uh, We're looking at live pictures, by the way, of Lee Circle as the Rex Parade uh, makes its way around Lee Circle. But go on, Mr. Nolan. They Where have had uh, queens who have been uh, uh, queen of uh, Twelfth Night Revelers Ball and also uh, uh, just recently, and also uh, queen of the Carnival. And there's also uh, one lady here who's still quite prominent in New Orleans who's been also uh, queen of Comus and also queen of the Carnival. There was one young lady, my research tells me, that who got the bean by mistake and refused to give it back. <laughs> there have been all sorts of stories about that. There, uh, it's also traditional in, in the Club Night Revelers as the Davy Johns come to the ball in a white evening dress, uh, indicating that it is a, a matter of luck and they should all be appropriately dressed if they have to perform in the court. And there have been some that have come down there in not a white dress and uh, been selected for the court, not knowing it that they were uh, candidates for uh, the court. Again, you're going to be seeing uh, extensive coverage of the Rex Parade as the parade passes our position here on Canal Street. You're looking at live pictures from Lee Circle. Uh, Rex's theme this year is nature's royalty. And up at the den this morning, let me tell you, the floats were really gorgeous. And as you can see, their beauty on the streets now. Quite, quite a good theme. Uh, you know, a float maker can do a lot with this theme. Nature's royalty, oh, yeah. just about anything yeah. fits, right? Yeah. The, the proclamation that uh, I think you showed it, the breakfast right, edition this morning, Charlie. Yeah, royal quartermaster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quartermaster. Showed us the royal proclamation. The royal quartermaster. And there was the, the royal peacock. Yes. Uh, I, I think saluting yes. the queen today. That's right. A beautiful poster. This, this is a rather interesting thing. Uh, 
over on the balcony there, you see the uh, flagstaff. And uh, as Rex approaches, uh, they will uh, two block. Here we're looking at Bourbon Street before we get uh, to look at the uh, Boston Club uh, uh, balcony. We're looking at live pictures from Bourbon Street, and you see the crowd building there. And uh, You know, I, I, I'm not surprised at the size of the crowd, but, you know, years ago when there was the, uh, the costume contest, on Bourbon Street, there was a uh, more of a reason, I think, for so many people, especially costumers, to be down in the heart of the French Quarter. Of course, there are thousands of costumers on Canal Street, many of them down around our Mascathon area in the 400 block of Canal. But look at these people. Why? <laughs> Why are so many people going well, down there? What are they seeing? I know that there is they're Papa seeing Joe's. Each other. And, they're <laughs> each other. and they usually move down once the parade is on Canal Street. They're, they're, many of them will move towards Canal Street. It's just a, it's just an event. It's a uh, place to be. Yeah, it's a place right. to be to That's have right. that last fling before uh, Lent begins tomorrow, Ash Wednesday. And, uh, you know, w the year that there was not uh, a, a full-blown Mardi Gras such in 1979, psychologists said that, that there was a lot more stress in the community yeah. in the year following uh, that, that year, that there were no downtown parades and Carnival was not as big as it usually is in here you see the lead elements of the Rex Parade for 1985, the police communications van and the, uh, the mounted patrolman. No doubt about it, Mardi Gras is a great in release. That group. Did you see her? Yeah, she's, she's, she's riding quite well, right near the front yeah, of the... She's, uh, right she's the riding the crowd Lead line, which is, a, which is the most difficult line to ride in a parade. Have you ever ridden a horse in the parade? Oh, yes, yes. And there are many people who, who sometimes play tricks on your horse, you know, and... Uh, it's uh, a scary thing at times. Now, many of the horses are escorted in the Rex Parade. Many of the riders prefer not to yes, handle their own horses well, and instead you, have escorts. You Before. don't know your mount. You see? And, and, and down here in the crowded area, it's, uh, it's sometimes uh, better to have someone uh, close at hand. I was told that uh, Rex this year hired or rented more horses than ever before. Something like 30 horses will be yes. marching well, down you, Canal you'll Street. You'll see plenty today. of mounted, mounted lieutenants. I know that's my favorite. If I had to pick a way to ride a parade, that oh, would be it. Oh, it's marvelous. It's marvelous. Here the we plane. Were, we were mounted one day, uh, one, one particular year, for five hours without dismounting due to a mishap in the parade. Better you than me, you at least. Uh, five <laughs> hours on a horse has got to be a killer, right? And then you sat in a hot tub for another that's five right. hours, I'm sure. You're looking at pictures of St. Bernard now, live, as the uh, uh, parade continues down there. Here are some of the uh, lead units of the, uh, the several parades which are underway down there. The Araby Parade uh, was earlier. The uh, second parade uh, being seen down there today is Samson and Delilah. And the fourth is Atrus, uh, parading in its third year. And uh, What a beautiful float. Tremendous. Two white stallions. Tremendous. The Rex Parade is just about ready to uh, officially get underway here in front of the Boston Club. It's a uh, place There's where it'll be. There's our Andrea hoping. Hall. There she is. She's riding. There's Andrea Hall riding. In Samson and Delilah, I With think. With pink champagne. Is Andrea going to propose a toast here? Well, I should hope. That's going to be quite a thrill for Andrea. This is her, uh, her first Mardi first Gras. Carnival, and right? earlier built herself as a damsel in distress. That does not look like a distressed damsel to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, where is Mike? Mike is also, Mike Sanders is also in this parade. Mike is probably distressed that he's not on the floor. But Andrea Mary Lenatro, oh, and their parade is just now starting to reach uh, the reviewing oh, stand here in Chalmette. And, uh, Nick, we thank you for all the help you've given us here with the police, jury, and civil defense today. Wait, wait. Wait. On behalf of myself and the St. Bernard Parish Police Jury, we wish to offer you the key to the parish of St. Bernard, one for Andrea, and one for our captain, Larry Lenatra. Wish you have a fine rain today. So Charlie and Lynn, that's what's going on here in St. Bernard. We'll be back with more as soon as Samson and Delilah and A. Truce make their way past the reviewing stand. Okay, Mike, looks like y'all are having fun down there. What a thrill that must have been for Andrea being toasted. We're back on Canal Street. With the Ross Volunteers of Texas A&M University, College Station, Texas. This fine military drill team consisting of 100 cadets is located near Bryan, Texas and is the honor guard for the governor of Texas, Mark White.
under the direction of Mr. L. Boyd Smith, Jr. This year marks their 34th appearance in the Rex Parade. Their white uniforms are a familiar sight each Mardi Gras. And, of course, we're very proud to have them with us once again for 1985. The Ross Volunteers of Texas A&M University, and as they uh, get in front of the reviewing stand, they always traditionally go through a salute, and we'll be back with the Rex Parade and more Mardi Gras 1985 right after this. A good idea for its time, but isn't it time you have SCB Touchstone service? So convenient, it can open up a whole new world of possibilities. Telephone banking, shopping, even home computer communications directly through your Touchstone phone. Save $22.99. Call 1-800-233-1776 before February 28th for free connection. SCB Touchstone service from South Central Bell. Governor Edwin Edwards entered his second administration with a popularity unmatched since Huey Long. Yet his career has been surrounded by controversy. The World's Fair, the tax increase, the Saints, and three grand jury investigations. Has all of this affected his ability to govern our state? In a candid interview, New Center 6 political specialist Clancy Dubose talks to Governor Edwards to find out his feelings on his past, present, and his future. Edwin, starting Wednesday on New Center 6 at 6 and 10. You know, there's more to Burger King than burgers. Sure. How about a whaler? What about a chicken sandwich? The whaler's a big, plump filet of fish. Yeah, well, the chicken's tender, juicy white meat and... The whaler has lettuce. So has the chicken sandwich. But the whaler has creamy tartar sauce. The chicken has real egg mayonnaise. How about a fresh sesame seed bun? Or a sesame seed roll. The whaler sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Or Burger King now. Chicken. Next, a widow sues her nephew for the return of her dead husband's golf clubs. That's the will? Yes, sir. Did you see him write it? No, sir, I was at work at the time. But the plaintiff says she has the legal will left by her husband. Did he write this out himself? Uh, he, he dictated it to, to, uh, to, to Connie. He dictated it to me. So you, you wrote it out? I wrote it out. Weekdays at 4.30 on TV6. Welcome back to Canal Street and our continuing coverage of Mardi Gras 1985. We are waiting for the 4th Marine Aircraft Wing Band to approach us. Here Here's come some of the lieutenants in the Rex organization on horseback wearing the traditional green, gold, and purple garb. For faith, power, and justice, the colors stand for. Gold, of course, for power, and purple for justice, and green for faith. Right. And I got to tell you, the weather is a lot to be faithful yeah. for. That's faithful right. and thankful for today. And, now, and here they are, the 4th Marine Aircraft Wing Band from right here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Proud to present this fine Marine Band under the direction of Lieutenant Irvin Boshier, USMC. They performed in the Rex Parade previous year. And Rex always welcomes them back. Marine Corps Band, the 
uh, four Marine Aircraft Wing Band, and as the band uh, drums its cadence, we've been joined by Blaine Kern, the master float maker, the man who built this beautiful Rex Parade. Blaine, <laughs> you, you, do you have your voice? You usually lose it on Carnival. I got it better this year. A little bit better this year. That's because you were royalty yourself this year. You were no, Allah. but no, yeah. because I got three <laughs> sons helping me. Oh, and oh. All the in the world. Did you, just, did you just jump out of the convertible? Because yes, you're I usually did. running yes. one of the lead cars. That's, that's the what I did. And I want you to know, we're coming up here in the old days, before you were born with Mel Levin, Channel 6. That, that's and almost true, but I'm not, I'm not going to contradict that. I'm, no, I'm Charlie, let you, you were around. That. I was just a baby, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I wasn't. This I, is a beautiful parade this year. What a day. What about the crowd, Blaine? Phenomenal crowd, and this Rex Parade is a classic, a throwback to the traditional parades of the turn of the century with flowers, leaves shimmering. It's a gorgeous parade. Watch it. I'm very, very proud of it. I got to look at them this, this morning, and they were nice. You would consider this one of the prettiest oh, parades? Yeah. Frankly, it's my, it's my favorite. Is it? Sure, because that's, I started with Rex. It's, here, it's, uh, here you yeah. see now H. Devon Graham, Rex 1985, King of Carnival, the Monarch of Merriment, as he approaches the Boston Club. Once more, the Monarch of Merriment is leading his glitter, glittering parade through the streets of his carnival capital. And once he reaches the Boston Club, he will be toasted by Mr. Brooke Duncan, who is the uh, president of the Boston Club, the traditional host for the Rex organization on this day. And in return, Rex will give a toast to his queen and thank the members of the club for their hospitality on this, his day. He will also be presenting his wife, and the Queen of Rex, bouquets of flowers. H. Devon Graham receiving the applause of family and friends and members of the court. Devon Graham, Rex, 1985. Now, Let's what is happening now, Mr. Nolan? Let's right now, the, the uh, colors of Rex have been two blocks. You see the flag on the Boston Club's balcony, and he's preparing now for his toast, and uh, you'll notice that the Let's paint listen is to the... to return to the Boston Club and enjoy your legendary and usual hospitality. It's great to be here assisted by two able pages, Benjamin Arnold Dupuy and Patrick Kerrigan McCausland. They've done an outstanding job for me. Kept me out of trouble all the way. I'd like to pay a special toast to a special lady today whose grace and charm and smile and captures the heart of our kingdom. I'd like to toast our queen, who's just a wonderful lady, and I'm just so delighted to be able to see her at the ball tonight. Court couldn't be better. We're going to have a great ball. We thank you all for your hospitality. Rex now drinks the uh, traditional flowers. Go crashing down. Uh, now I have a special gift to my queen that I'd like to present at this time. 
Rex is presenting his queen with the traditional bouquet of spring blossoms in the colors of carnival, purple, green, and gold. And next he will present a bouquet of American Beauty roses. I also noticed on your balcony today two other ladies that I would like to pay special tribute to. There's a lady down to the right in blue and a lady in pink that I would like to say that I wouldn't be here without them. Those are Mrs. Graham, his mother, and his wife, Mrs. H. Devon Graham, Jr. Thank you again for your wonderful hospitality. I'll see you at the ball tonight. H. Devon Graham, see you at the ball. Kind of informal, don't you think? <laughs> An informal greeting to the crowd. Back, Rex. Someone caught his flag. Someone caught his glass. He didn't get a chance to crash his glass. Look at him. We should point out, you know, we've been talking about the history and the legacy There's Mrs. of, Graham. We of saw Rex just briefly. in families. One of the pages today. There she is, Mrs. Betty Graham. Sunglasses in the center of your screen. H. Devon Graham, Rex 1985, going off to complete his rounds today. Reading his subjects. There he is. Hey! As I was saying, one of the pages, one of the two pages on the Rex float, Benjamin Arnold Dupuy is the grandson of Dr. Homer Dupuy. Who was a former Rex. Who was a Rex 1963. That's right. And there is His Majesty bandwagon. Blaine Kern, that did those cupids come from the World's Fair? No. We've been on for quite a while on that same float. Well, that's one we don't change. It's traditional, you know. Those King's are the Rex musicians I follow. And his Majesty's bandwagon. Now the King's Jesters. Float number three in the Rex Parade. What is a royal court without the royal jesters to poke fun at the high and mighty? And even the king himself, Rex, never moves without his jesters. And here they are again. The first animated float we're seeing today, the Royal Jesters. The Rex floats, Blaine, always seem to be very colorful. They always seem to have lots of muted tones. And, and uh... they, the Rex parade is the best organized parade also everything's on schedule if you look at your schedule where we're supposed to be we are you have been today i guarantee you the king's jesters float number three and the beads are coming out of there <laughs> they're throwing a lot of those tri-colored purple gold and green beads right here you see the u.s navy band from new orleans riding aboard the renovated old iron this Navy show band under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer John Patton has been performing in the Rex Parade for more than 10 years. looking at Lee Circle now as we watch the festivities in front of the Boston Club. Here come the truck parade that'll immediately follow Rex. And there are hundreds of them. Mostly families, neighborhood organizations, groups getting together, working weekends for an entire year. Paper mache and painting, putting together their trucks. It allows uh, really the populace to get involved with Carnival. Carnival proper over the years has been a has been a party that the public has been invited to, a party staged by Rex and the other organizations. The truck crews allow everybody else to get involved and make their own. Pro bono publico. Right, for the public good. Again, this, these are the truck floats around Lee Circle, here on Canal Street, the Bogra. the Bogra. The fatted ox is the symbol of the last meat to be eaten before the Lenten fast. That begins on Ash Wednesday, the day after Mardi Gras. Surrounded by butchers and cooks, the Beau Gras' destiny is certain. There's the Olympia Brass Band of New Orleans. They really don't need no introduction. Olympia Brass Band. The old Dixieland Marching Jazz Band performed for Rex. Rex considers the Dixieland Band a symbol of New Orleans, and how true. And here comes the theme float for this Rex Parade. 
the title float, Nature's Royalty. The title float announces this year's theme, and His Majesty will show us some of nature's splendor. Another animated float with a twisting and turning hoot owl. The owl has some significance with the organization, or does it? The, the owl. Oh, yes, the owl is, uh, you know, wise. And that is the escutcheon of the Rex organization on the side of the float. Oh, and here come the blue. Oh, we got my first God. doubloon. And the tricolor on the shield. The jester's hat, the mask, and the crown. Watch out, guys, because here comes the whole blue. Oh, right. Thank you. Now, float number six, Prince's Feather. The uncommon herb called Prince's Feather is depicted here, where herb gardens since medieval times have flourished. They are depicted in a monastery. Before his serene stone waters, a large cowled monk offers a bowl of red spiked regal herb. Float Those number are six, beautiful. Prince's Feather. Beautiful. Now, the Naval ROTC Honor Guard from the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia. Again, you're looking at live pictures of Bourbon Street now. People are begging for beads from the balconies. That's always a popular pastime as the day wears on. And they've also begged for other things, but we, yeah, won't, we won't get into that. <laughs> you know, the, the sun is really starting to come out just as you predicted, Charlie. Back on Canal Street with float number seven, the Royal Point Sienna. The serpentine roots of the Royal Point Sienna went through the architectural ruins of a Mexican temple. Queen Mary Stewart loving every minute of this. Amid strangely carved figures and a large pre-Columbian head, the Point Sienna sprouts in brilliant blossoms and tropical pods. Look number seven in the Rex Parade. Momentary pause. A king is actually down at the Friend Dennis Club, which is uh, two blocks further uh, up Canal Street toward the cemetery from us. That is a traditional point where the king toasts, right, your lease? The Friend Dennis Club. The Dennis Club, yes. He's no doubt down there right now. At this time, I see the parade held up. Uh, that would be his last toast. Then he'll make the loop on Canal Then he'll make the loop, Street. come back, and he will uh, disembark down around the uh, foot of Canal Street, and it'll be whisked off by limousine immediately back to the den. While we're looking at float number seven, Blaine Kern, you were talking about the number of flowers, the vibrant yeah. colors that you were using yeah, this year. Four flowers of the Rex Parade, and maybe any two parades of Mardi Gras. Any two, four flowers. And it, that's what makes it special, I believe. This is the organization that really got you going. I mean, they sent you to Europe, the, well, the former oh, captain. Banner out of his own pocket. Of course, he loved Rex and Tulane. The same with the doubloons. When it was first thrown, Darwin said, well, I'll, I'll come up with the money. I'm going to want Rex to be out anything. He says, if, if I have to underwrite it, they're not sold, I'll buy it, remember? And since then, Blaine Kern has traveled around uh, the world yeah, many, yeah. many times. And that's where you that's how you do your homework. Exactly. That's how you research exactly. the themes exactly. and the various very uh, details that you will have on each of your floats. Each one of these are the countries where this Royal Point Center is very prevalent is the in the Mayan Penin in the May uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and the, the Mayan ruins and anchors and all this type of uh here now more live St. Bernard from St. Bernard with the Samson and Delilah parade. Um, Mike Sanders and you saw Andrea Hall taking part in that parade. They, this is a male and female organization formed in 1983. It has 135 members and this year 11 floats are in the parade including six double deckers and two mini floats with six princesses and the favorite throws are the crew logo garters and bikinis <laughs> and the rare 10 gauge purple anodized doubloons. The theme this year as you may or may not have heard Mike Sanders say earlier is uh, facts fiction and fables and it is their third parade quite a, quite a lot of people down in st bernard uh, watching carnival again we're at a pause in the rex parade on canal street 
This is the sixth stop and the final stop that Rex will make on Canal Street. Again, those are beautiful floats in St. Bernard. They're having a great time down there. Blaine, are those your floats? Yes, they are, yes. And again, you know, we were talking about the travel involved. How many days do you actually spend on the road or in the air traveling to come back with these concepts and I, ideas? I travel about a month out of the year normally, but we visit every place, even if we can't go out Mardi Gras, every great celebration in the world, we'll visit the places their floats and their things are built. You uh, always can learn, and you know, you're learning all the time. Now this particular float that we're seeing here, this might be incorporated next year in, in another parade or with to a different theme. Well, but, but the things are rechanged each year. There's Pinocchio. Blaine, you branched out to Galveston this year for the first time. Yeah, the crew of Momus in Galveston was Not there. our Momus, their no, Momus. No, their Momus. <laughs> it was, I think, about two years earlier than our Momus. But a, a 1900 storm, it blew away. The whole city did all of Now, you put some floats on a barge and shipped it over there, yes. I believe. What? They're all on its Mardi Gras is proliferating. Darwin said, Fanner said, Blaine, Mardi Gras is going to democratize and go all over. Of course, he was yeah. right. That's going to be. That's going to be great for business, right? Oh yeah. And you know, Mardi Gras <laughs> not only going on in New Orleans, also down in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, everywhere. Do you, sure. Do you do you in, in about supply any cities. floats down there? No. Back live now. Back Canal on Street Canal Street. With Here's the flowers. Uh, float number seven and uh, Royal Poinciana. And right behind them, you're going to recognize the tune this band is going to play, folks. This is the St. Aug Purple Knight, St. Augustine. This colorful group of 180 members strong is one of our local high school bands making their 18th appearance at the Rex Parade by popular demand. Under the direction of Mr. Edwin Hampton, this band has performed for many of the New Orleans Saints football games and many, many carnival parades. Let's listen to the song they're going to play. I bet I know it. You've got what makes Wallace great. TV6 theme song. Float number eight, the Emperor Swan. There's live animation on this float, the magnificent outstretched wings and graceful head of an Emperor Swan hover above an idyllic setting. Smaller swans glide across the pale blue water of a pond amid pink and white lotus blossoms. And again, Blaine Kern, the ever-present flowers you were talking about. Exactly. I'll have to say goodbye because I'm going to go catch the parade on the other side. Thank you for goodbye. joining us Hope once again. You make Mardi Gras possible, Blaine, Blaine, Blaine Kern. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mardi Gras. Goodbye, have a wonderful carnival day. Blaine, Blaine Kern. Kern. Again, you're looking at the maskers aboard uh, float number eight, the Emperor Swan. And Lynn, the sun is out and it's heating up. <laughs> you asked for the sun, Charlie, but it is beautiful. There's still a slight breeze. It's and nice. it is slightly cool. I don't know, maybe 73 degrees. I, maybe, I don't think you Dan can ask would, for a better day. Dan and Margaret up at Lee Circle, maybe they have better estimates of the, <laughs> of the temperature right now than yeah. we are. Well, we're also working <laughs> and getting excited, working hard, catching beads. <laughs> Float number uh, number eight, the Emperor Swan. Uh, the Emperor Rex. Swan is is stopped right in front of the Boston Club. The maids are certainly getting their share of beads. Rex Parade today is 27 floats long. And uh, again, the, the theme of today's parade is nature's royalty, both uh, flora and fauna, and uh, there are a few beasts toward the end of the parade. Not the riders, mind you, just <laughs> the, float, uh, the float topics. I don't know, I can't think of a swan as a beast. <laughs> Waterfowl. Again, pitching. Uh, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience with Devon Graham, and uh, thankfully he has a good day today. You had a good day, too. Excellent. We had just excellent weather. 
Well, today is a marvelous day. In fact, imagine the sun's out now, and maybe it's a little warm right now. <laughs> a, little, a little less than regal? No, I would never say that. It's a perfect weather. Any day is a great day for carnival. Well, you know, only one Mardi Gras was Rex rained out. We're back Thank in you. Metairie now in Fat City, and look at the crowd there. They're waiting for the uh, big Argus parade, and Ann and Alec will be bringing you the Argus parade once we go out there. Uh, but as I was just saying, Rex. Rex stayed in his den in 1933 back on Canal Street. It was the only Rex parade rained out, and certainly not a problem here. 1945, the World War II war prevented Carnival from, from taking place. In 51, the Korean conflict. And then most of us remember 1979, the strike by the New Orleans Police Department. Here is the U.S. Air Force Reserve. The 926 Tactical Fighter Group Air Force Reserve Band from Bell Chase, Louisiana. We're proud to have this Air Force Reserve Band with us again this year in the Rex Parade. We welcome them for their sixth appearance in the parade and know that they'll be enjoyed by all. It's our hope that they're going to join us again for future presentations. The 926 Tactical Fighter Group Air Force Reserve Band from good old Bell Chase. It's got to be a lot of fun being on that truck. You hear the music, you get to ride and see the crowds and, and throw all you can. Here's float number nine, Emperor Penguin. This is a wonderful float, just beautiful blues and white. It's hydraulic animation. The Emperor Penguin marches to and fro over the glittering snowbanks of Antarctica. His polar domain is aglow with icy caverns and enormous snowflakes depicted in royal deep blue and white. Nice and cool. And now, float number 10, King Conch. A baroque dolphin bounds above a rolling crest of waves amid the sea foam of a larger crest at the rear of the float. A majestic spiral shell, King Conch, is revealed. And of course, Conch is enjoyed as a delicacy in many parts of the world, and it's quite uh, delicious. I was down in the Caribbean on a boat one day, and we were actually spear fishing for fish, and we had divers catching the conch. And they simply brought it on the boat, took the conch out of the shell, marinated it, and he ate it raw. Here's another Navy ROTC drum well, and bugle Don't port. call the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You're right. It's a Navy. Charles. I was, <laughs> these are young Navy. <laughs> young Let, Navy. Let's quickly go to Mike Sanders and Andrea Hall in St. Bernard. Well, we Bernard. debate the military. <laughs> Andrea Hall and Mike Sanders in St. Bernard. That's right. And now we're at the uh, point of the day where the last big parade in St. Bernard is rolling down St. Bernard Highway. The Here King. at the official welcoming stand, right in front of the courthouse, it's the crew of Atrus. That's right, and the king and queen of Atrus um, are receiving their awards, and we can tell you who they are, David and Marianne Helmet. I think that's right, Helmet at least. There are six bands who are um, parading down these streets, and they sound awfully good. And they are nine double-decker floats, and this is what's going on in St. Bernard. A lot of fun, and now it's time to go back to New Orleans. Okay, right, thank you very thank you. much. Back on Canal Street with... This is float number 11, the King Cobra. Pretty fierce looking animal there. <laughs> Twisting vines and cluster of elephant ears have overgrown the multi-armed and bejeweled idols in an Indian jungle. Arched above the scene is a hissing King Cobra. His menacing hood spread like a venomous mantle. Again, more animation than I've seen in recent years. The, uh, in the Rex organization's floats. The subtle colors, the greens and the lavenders and the purples and the beiges of that, uh, of that float along with the, the, the very green The lush cobra. greenery, yeah. Colors that really stand out with the, uh, the sun kind of peeking in and out behind the clouds this afternoon. Now the Buckholst High School Air Force ROTC band and drill team, and we'll be coming back to them. Let's go to Bob and Buddy on Bourbon Street. On Bourbon Street, Charlie, you're looking down Bourbon Street now and the huge crowds that have graced the streets since early morning. And we're surrounded, uh, Buddy and I, by the sheep people. Uh, 
Yes, indeed. The sheep people are loving it all. We have we have uh, folks, not everyone from New Orleans. No, no. We've got some from Michigan, some from Alabama, which, some which, from which Minnesota. Give me an out of town. Oh, here. These three are right here from out, out of town. From where? Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. What do you think of the Mardi Gras? Oh, we love it. Uh, do you dress like this in Birmingham? Oh, all the time. <laughs> holy <laughs> sheep. Uh, she is holy sheep. We have dumb sheep. We have all the rest of them. Charlie, come back and see us anytime. Charlie and Lynn. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. Back on Canal Street with float number 12, the King Cup. Again, one of nature's royalty, an arbor of King Cups, heralds of springtime. Festoon is Majesty Rex's garden. Regal double arches are entwined with the pastel blooms. Imposing urns ornament the royal grounds. Float number 12, the King Cup, 1985 Rex Parade. And here come the bees. <laughs> the riders have spotted Nolan, I think. Well, they certainly should recognize you. <laughs> what? Well, they certainly should recognize you standing <laughs> up here. Here's the U.S. Coast Guard Jazz Band, the 8th Coast Guard District from New Orleans. The Coast Guard Band is under the direction of Lieutenant Jay Gogut. They performed for the Rex Parade for years now. And we are going to leave the Coast Guard Band and go to Lee Circle with Dan and Matt. I tell you what, there's a float going by right now that Buddy Deliberto would love. It's called You Can Bet On It. <laughs> Win, place, and show depicted on the side. Uh, I don't see anybody depicting a sportscaster losing money, but I'm sure that the spirit is there somewhere. Well, you're sure to win here because these guys are still, are throwing so much stuff, it's just unbelievable. The 50th, uh, the 50th anniversary of the Elks Crew of Orleanians is just beginning. It'll be going on all afternoon. Back to Canal Street. Hey, Dan, thank you much. And here we're looking at the streetcar named Desire. A this classic. And on board, by the way, George Fanola and his chosen view, and they ride every year, of course, and they're playing the... Uh, the theme of Carnival, If Ever I Cease to Love. This is a facsimile of the old New Orleans streetcar, which inspired Tennessee Williams' famous work and has been part of Rex's pageant for many years. And here it is again, the Rex Special, 1985, the Desire Streetcar. Charlie, I bet you don't know the words to If Ever I Cease to Love. If Ever I Cease to, to love, love, If, if ever, ever I Cease to Love. May the fish get legs and the cows lay eggs. If ever I cease to you love. You did that very well. You want to <laughs> sing it for us now? <laughs> Can you hum a few bars? Oh, there it goes. Now. Here is float number 15, King Cotton. Look at the majestic float. This float recalls the theme of our first world exposition in 1884 and the founding of Audubon Park in 1885. Of course, that was the site of Louisiana's first World's Fair 100 years ago. A genial King Cotton is pictured before an imposing arcade of glass and steel surrounded by cotton blossoms and magnolias. And I suppose in the year 2085, they will be showing the, the riverfront area where the old 1984 World's Fair was well, that's 100 up to, years before. That'll be up to some other anchor team, I'm afraid. I, don't plan to be around. I don't want to be around. <laughs> but, I, but getting on, on talking about this float, this is one of the floats where uh, Blaine Curran has tried to use fabric on the float. The uh, king's beard here and his mantle, along with the cuffs on his sleeve, are actually uh, feel like uh, like cotton. There's a there's a synthetic fabric that gives the look of cotton. And this is something new uh, used in several parades this year, and certainly it's something very well done. A very nice effect. Certainly, it's something new in the Rex parade this year. It, it gives a very realistic look, and there you see a close-up look at at uh, King Cotton, float number 15. The father of the hot dog, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that company would like you to think that. <laughs> King Cotton. Oscar Mayer would. <laughs> King Cotton, a legendary giant here in the Port of New Orleans. All the cotton that has moved across the docks over these many years and honored in this year's 1985 uh, Rex Parade. King Cotton. is the Royal Fern, float number 16, clusters of Royal Fern cascade in a verdant splendor. I just Reminders also of nature's bounty. Myriad fronds dance in a tropical breeze, a beautiful setting further enhanced by brilliant hued macaws, which are perched throughout the scene. One of my favorite birds, the macaws.
And here the riders and wrecks are dressed as fur. <laughs> now let's go back to Fat And here we are out at Minnery one more time, and at last, the parade is showing up in our shot. Right, and we can see the first float, which is the captain's float, and I hope you can get a good look at this magnificent peacock, which is uh, standing guard over this marvelous float. You can see the gorgeous plumes, and that's courtesy, we should say, of NBC, maybe. Yes, Proud the following... The following parade is brought to you in living color by NBC, and that's Captain Joe Gorman riding atop that float. We're just getting the first units that are coming into view here. There are 21 floats in the Argus Parade, and by the way, it's kind of interesting this year, for the very first time, the Argus has a king. That's right, the first year, although this is the eighth parade out here in Metairie, once again, we'll be here to show you the whole crew of Argus. As it happens live, so stay tuned now, back to whatever else is going on in this mad city of ours. <laughs> well, well we've got a great band marching down Canal Street. This is the Kennedy High School Band, Liz. From right here in New Orleans, the Kennedy High School Band. Now, float number 17, the King of Beasts, a crowned King of Beasts with outstretched paws, roars his authority above the crowds, on a platform draped with a velvet and ermine. Two golden peers of the prize stand guard over the bejeweled symbols of sovereignty, the orb and the scepter. Float number 17, the King of Beasts. dragon. Of all the dragons known to mythology and legend, it was the imperial dragon of China which symbolized the power of the emperor. It alone had five claws, all other dragons had but three. The imperial dragons are seen entwined throughout the fascinating porcelain tiles of the Forbidden City, and of course I was in China last year, and the Forbidden City doesn't quite look like that. But, but look at the <laughs> colors. <laughs> If the Forbidden City were in New Orleans, it would look like that, right? You're right. You're right. By the way, on, on board that band, on board that float, uh, you know, with the Dirt Dark Water Jazz Band of uh, New Orleans. And here you see float number 19, the Imperial Eagle. A majestic golden eagle soars above a mountaintop Greek temple, a symbol of ancient gods and spires. And of later kingdoms and dynasties, the eagle is depicted on standard shields and imperial heraldry. And this, of course, is WDSU-TV, TV6, New Orleans, Louisiana. And we'll be here with you till 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. Well, there's a lot whenever more to the come. Action, that's right, whenever the action begins to die down, and believe me, it has just started. That's right, the maskathon is still to come. They're still going at it hot and heavy down there. I'm sure the parade is interrupting them just a little bit down there. Here you see some of the maskers in the crowd. We a have friend a of mine, Johnny Jordan. I'm not quite sure what he is, but he's with a group of five or six. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the Imperial Eagle approaching us, uh, we described earlier. Again, the theme of this year's Rex Parade is nature's royalty. This is the Imperial Eagle coming up. As we, as we described it earlier, this is an uh, eagle soaring high above a mountaintop Greek temple. There's a lot of Greek mythology in all these parade themes, isn't there? That was right from the beginning. The mythological subjects seem to attract uh, the founding fathers of Carnival. And Rex, the king of Carnival, is supposed to reside in the off-season, if you can call it that, on Mount Olympus overlooking the uh, Vale of Tempe in the classic realms of Greece. And he used to come to New Orleans and, uh, and take over the city from the mayor on the Monday preceding carnival. He would leave his uh, Oriental Palace and come to his Occidental City. Well, there are a lot of New Orleanians who go to resort cities to spend the summer or the holidays. It's only fitting that Rex would be a, a resort visitor in New Orleans, I right? I think that's most proper. This is float the number. That it should be. <laughs> this is float number 20, the Queen Bee. A swarm of bees hover around the many tiered rings of their hive, and the focus of their attention, Her Majesty the Queen Bee, and rightly so, in the Rex Parade. An intricate pattern of honeycomb flowers and tendrils illustrate the bees' fabled history. 
killer bees. No, not killer no, bees. No, no, These no. are Rex bees. These are, and they're beautiful bees. Again, very textured costumes. You know, in the past, Nolan, we recall seeing, not Mr. Nolan, we recall seeing um, just the regular satin, silky kind of costume. These are very... The Rex Riders. But these are, these are more involved. These are they more are, textured. They're involved, and, and they're involved with the theme directly. They look like bees. They do. They just look like bees. Let's go now to Lee Circle with Dan and Meg. Here we are. We're looking at a float now called Up, Up, and Away. It's number 23 out of... I know it's written down somewhere, but after about an hour or so, you lose track anyway, but they just keep coming and keep coming. And these are some of the most generous throwers in Mardi Gras, in Carnival, the whole season for that matter. They generally like to throw them by the clump. They don't like to bother taking the paper off the beads. They just throw them by the gross. They're throwing a lot of the truck floats this year have cups specifically made for them, which is a little unusual. Generally, we see the, the beads and the hatchets and the rubber knives, and this year we're seeing a lot of the cups that are made for the particular individual truck crews. You're looking at Oriental Splendor now, some great costumes in the Elk School of Orleanians. Some great action on Canal Street, too. Let's go back to Charlie and Lynn. And Dan, this is float number 21 in the Rex Parade, the Royal Antler, the topmost branch or tine of the mature deer, is the Royal Antler. An astonishing buck with wondrous antlers emerges from the strange hues of an enchanted forest. Smaller deer cavort in the multicolored foliage that surrounds this very beautiful float. Here's float number 22, Queen Anne Lace. Another lively animated float. A beautifully costumed figure of Queen Anne appears before an early English castle. Flags and banners fly from the royal turrets. The dainty white flower bearing her name laces the countryside. And for you without colored television sets at home, these riders are wearing the brightest of bright pink magenta colors you've ever seen. Would you call that shocking pink? I'd call that very shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, coming up into view now is the Bell Junior High School Band from here in New Orleans, the Andrew J. Bell Junior High School Band. This has got to be a thrill of a lifetime for these youngsters to march in this Rex Parade. This, of course, is a local band under the direction of Donald Richardson and has received awards and recognition from many organizations. They've also had the privilege of performing in Europe. The Andrew Bell Junior High School Band. of Mardi Gras 1985, right after this. Are you hungry, Bob? No, no, you go ahead. I'll just sit here. How about some chicken nuggets? Well, I'm buying. Let's go. McDummy? Church's fried chicken is that way. Are you telling me Church's has nuggets? Would I lie to you? Yeah, but if they're Church's, I know they're good. They're more than good because you can have them more than one way. Regular or spicy for a hot new taste. New Church's crispy nuggets, two flavors, four sauces, a thousand times better. These are great. What would I do without you? Starve. Back live on Canal Street now with more of the 1985 Rex Parade. Float number 23, the crowned crane. The crowned crane, unlike his brothers, prefers equatorial sun to the wet marsh. Beneath the blistering rays of King Saul, the crowned crane stands erect, surveying his domain of orange grasses and golden cattails. The fiery colors on board this float. That radiates color. That Float number 24 is the Royal Bay. When the nymph Daphne fled the advances of Apollo, she was turned into a, a laurel or a bay tree, which remained henceforth the favorite tree of the sun god. The laurel wreath thus became the symbol of triumph in the ancient world. And we saw a shot of the sun god or a reasonable facsimile of him on the previous float. And Royal Bay. And again, more pink. I think pink is a very popular color with both the costumers and the float makers this year. 
Oh, it's so festive. I'm sure many of these men do not own a single other thing this color. Now the Glen Oaks High School Band. They're from Shreveport, Louisiana, and they... are marching in this Rex Parade to the delight of the crowds this afternoon. Under the, uh, they performed at the Battle of the Bands in Monroe. They performed at state fairs in Louisiana and numerous concert band festivals. Here's float number 25, the Monarch Butterfly. I think this is one of my favorites so far. I do love butterflies. A colony of monarch butterflies bedazzle the fortunate beholder as they immigrate across the southern sky. The gorgeousness of their colors, the profusion <laughs> of their wings dims the very brightness of the blue skies. Seeing all those fellas on board that float there with uh, butterfly wings is uh, is something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, a carnival, you can be anything you like. That's right? right. These men do not wear butterfly wings, nor do they wear bright magenta clothes. Now, but float number 26, the Royal Palm. And Jubilation, by the way, is the live music on board this uh, float under the direction of Mr. Leland Bennett. The Royal Palm, so abundant in Polynesia, is depicted in a dazzling island display. The intricately tattooed face of a mighty chieftain flares before the prow of a decorated war canoe. A profusion of tropical flowers sway above the scene, and the music again is, if ever, I cease to love. Let's listen. said it the way they say it in New Orleans, the Royal Calio, Calio. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The Royal Calliope uh, will be following this one. The Rex Parade is stopped momentarily in front of the Boston Club. <laughs> in Jubilation, you're looking at uh, underneath the float, uh, 26 here. And on top, the maskers uh, pitching. Let's go to uh, the French Quarter now with Bob and Buddy. Okay. Okay, we're still back on Bourbon Street now. What are you, a lizard? Or? Yeah, it's a lizard. That's good. <laughs> How'd you come up with the idea? How long did it take you to put it on? About a half an hour. You, you gotta be from New Orleans to dress up like that. Yes. What about him? You couldn't get him to dress up? <laughs> this is, uh, I don't know. No, you didn't want to. You dress up as a southern town. There you go. <laughs> a southern town. <laughs> a plant day. We got people all over the place. Yeah. Every now and then somebody comes close by that looks a real outlandish costume, and that's the kind that we're trying to get. Okay. Come on, hey. Come on in. Come on. All right. Who are you now? Who are you? Oh, okay. All the crazies are still around, and we're going to go ahead and throw it back to Charlie. Okay, buddy, thank you much. You look wonderful today. There you see His Majesty's bandwagon bringing up the end of the 1985 Rex Parade. And Jubilation is playing uh, behind us, Ulysse. Uh, we thank you once again for being with us this year. You were great as always. It's always a pleasure to be with you and Lynn. And I hope we're blessed with weather like this next year. Oh, thank absolutely. you so much for joining us. And I, I like the members of the Place de la Concorde. Victims <laughs> of the Place de la Concorde. <laughs> thank you. Hey, thank you, Ulysse, for being with us. Thank you. Lynn, tell us who we have here. These are, well, these are some of my friends. 
They are actually so. This is Lisa Curtis, who is spokesperson, and Becky Jordan, and Johnny Jordan back here, and we are going to get to Mr. Flambeau in just a moment. What are you? We are famous headless French people. Who might who might be? Robespierre, Danton, Marie Antoinette, Saint Genevieve. Did you make these costumes? Yes, we did. You made these costumes. Yes. Can we get a look at Mr. Flambeau back here? Okay. Real Can we take a, you, a real nice look at this guy? I, if you cannot tell, this man has a flaming hard hat. He is a Flambeau. That's right, Flambeau of the 80s. It's a new invention. How did you do this? Well, uh, a little bit of Ace Hardware helped and uh, some imagination. Is it warm? It gets a little hot after a while. Yeah. Now you, you've got to tell me what's powering that up there. What have you got in the tube? What, are you, what kind of gas are well, you burning? I see, I see a line here. Okay. Right, let's see. Uh -huh. We're up energy here. Oh, you've got a tank strapped oh, to your back. I see, I see. Is there any danger? Are you in any danger? Are we in any danger? I don't know. It's a little untested at this point. <laughs> so. The Nopsy will be proud of you, I'm sure. <laughs> a gas light here. Having a good time? Oh, yes, we're having a wonderful time. Where are your hands? Oh, uh, well, I can't show you right okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, the headless French people. The headless French people. I love it. <laughs> Happy Mardi Gras! Heading into the French Quarter. Have you been to the Mascathon? May we recommend a Mascathon in town? <laughs> On our way. Okay. Go. Well, good luck. Okay, Lynn. Let's go up to Lee Circle now with Dan Milham and Margaret Orr. I've decided that life is too short not to actually try and do a broadcast from the middle of this stuff as these truck floats go by. Listen, there are a lot of exciting places to be today in New Orleans, and this is one of them. Hey, Richard, can you handle all this? Did you catch some blue, some beads? This is Richard. Richard's a professional bead catcher. He's been doing this for all of his, what, three, four years? Two years old. Two years old. Every one of them spent on, on St. Charles on Mardi Gras, right? Yeah. Is this a regular yearly event for your family? Oh, Richard's here. We come here every year. Right? You're uptown residents? Where do you live? We're West Bank, Marrero. West Bank. You come over here. Every year. Spend the day over here on, on the East Bank. And then how late do you stay? About 3 or 4 o'clock. What do you do with all the beads that you end up with after? Two? We catch them. Richard plays with them at the <laughs> house and has them all over. They're all over. Uh, and you're going to be here for the duration, right? We'll be here until about 3 or 4 in the evening. Oh, it's a long day. Home. Of course, it only happens once a year. This is where in the middle of the 50th yeah. anniversary, you may see on some of the Elks Tour of Arlenians truck floats, the big 50. This is the 50th anniversary of the Elks Tour of Arlenians. Most of the truck floats have that 50th represented somewhere they're on. Because each float, now each float has its own theme. Each of the float has its own big crew of families that have all done their own costumes, gotten their own throws. And the throws range from, from beads to hatchets to swords to uh, cups, to cups this year, too, right? Why are we doing this? We're doing good. We're here with TV6. Why are we doing this? Because it's fun, you oh, party! Oh, I'm glad you worked. I'm glad you explained that to me. I hadn't noticed that anyone was having too much fun down here. It comes as a surprise to me. If you're real lucky, you'll get to see me hit in the head with a whole gross of beads by one of these people. Actually, they tend to notice us more when we're up there by our TV6 sign, but who wants to play it safe on a day like this? The sun's coming out, and every time the sun comes out, it feels like it raises the temperature about 8 degrees. Because this costume isn't too bad in the cloudy skies, but under the sun, you got yourself a, a scorching sorcerer down here. There go the dragon tails as the Elks crew of Orleanians continues. We're on truck uh, float about, oh, I guess about 40 now, but they'll probably get up close to 200 before they're through. You from uh, the New Orleans area? Yeah, from New Orleans East. From New Orleans East, and you come yeah. downtown every year? Yep, every year, and I go to Bourbon Street, too. Oh, well, they'll be looking for you. We got Bob Krieger yeah. and Buddy Diliberto waiting okay, over there to talk to you, all right? Hey. Tell them I said hello. <laughs> all right, you come up here every year? Yes, I do. You live around here, or you got to come away? New Orleans East. Oh, you come from New Orleans East as well? Yes, I do. Okay, so you make a little trip. You come here early yeah. and stay all day? Yep. How late are you going to be here tonight? Uh, maybe it's about 6.30. 6.30? Oh, yeah. Is that? Oh, you're calling it an early day yeah, then, huh? Okay, well, when you're down on Bourbon Street, say hello for Stop by the Mascathon when you're on Canal Street. They're going to have some fun up there. Speaking of fun, it continues as the truck parades continue. And so does the fun everywhere else. Let's go back to Charlie and Lynn on Canal Street. Okay, Thank you well, very much. Back on Canal Street now, the Rex Parade has stopped. The 26th. I took a little seat. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I was actually, easy for you. Well, go ahead, do my, my go ahead, Russian sit. Dance. 
I, I can cannot do my Russian sit. dance like this. <laughs> I cannot sit. I've got, I've got a hoop that sticks out from <laughs> here to Metairie, and I cannot sit out. But uh, the Royal Palm, we've been enjoying jubilation, entertaining right in front of the Boston Club. Uh, here comes a whoop. <laughs> a he got ball. you. Rex Braid is uh, it's still, and he almost getting, got me. Okay. And here comes another one. All right. Go. They're super. <laughs> Whoa. We're not very good. Maybe we ought to stick to anchoring and not catching or anything. Watch this one. You got it. Yeah. By the way, we want to tell Thank everybody you. that the Argus Parade will be immediately following shortly when it gets to the position where Ann Mulligan and Alec Gifford are. And uh, we'll be back with more of Mardi Gras 1985 right after this. an investment for a family. It really is a family affair. That's right. We're going to move over to Bourbon Street to see the madness that's happening there. Chris? Well, yes, indeed, we're on Bourbon Street. It's amazing who you can find on Bourbon Street, the masses of people. As we shoot across from the Royal Sinesta balcony here over to the Dukes of Dixieland, you can see a Dodgers uniform, maybe a couple of them. That's Eric Tracy of Los Angeles, a former employee of WWL Radio, and his lovely wife, Linda. And, of course, they're here to revel and have a good time here at Mardi Gras as always. He comes back every year for that. Well, I'm Larry Matson along with Chris Myers. We're here on the balcony of the Royal Sinesta on Bourbon Street. We've been here all morning long since about 7.30 this morning. You've had a pretty active day. You've just come back from the big Bourbon Street Awards. They, ha they have them back now this year, Larry. The world famous 21st annual Bourbon Street Awards, as Larry alluded to. And they're on Bourbon Street around the corner of Dumaine uh, near the Cafe Lafitte and Exile Bar. It's a fun place to be. I talked with some of the contestants of this fashion show, which is back now after a one-year absence. Here's what they had to say. Are you part of the parade here? I'm part of New Orleans. Well, that's good. Petronia, uh, uh, Petronia. I see. You look, you look charming here. Serious question. Now, what, what if your mother and father saw you in this outfit? What would they say? Oh my God, I worked hard. They probably would have loved it. Well, how much did it uh, cost you and how much time did it take you to put in, into it this? It took a lot of time. The costs I really don't know because we just kept adding and adding, you know, but um, not too much because as you see, it's just felt and glue and all the stuff. What is the name of this costume? Narcissus. Meaning? Narcissus. Oh, okay. I don't understand my accent. Now, you see, I have the meal and the flowers, but we made the flowers more erotic because Narcissus is a little boring flower. Tell me about your costume. What, what is it called and how much time or money did you put in? Well, it took about three months. It cost about $2,000. Um, and I enjoy doing it every year. That's just about it. And how many years have you done this? Four years straight. And what do we call this? Is this like an Indian chief or a... Well, Indian princess would be more like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about, what do we call your... Chief. You're the chief. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I got a serious question, and don't be offended. What would, what would your parents say if they saw you wearing these outfits walking on Mardi Gras? Unfortunately, they watch Channel 4, and I'm afraid they don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> what would yours say? They don't care. Oh, okay, well, good. They're having a good Mardi Gras. You yeah, Mardi Gras is uh, anything you want it to be. I wanted these beads of fuchsia, but they were out of that color. We're going to have the winner, hopefully, if they call us for that uh, famous Bourbon Street Awards around 2 o'clock or so. We'll try to update you when they announce the actual winner, Larry. I really don't think I should be the one to bring this up, but there have been some laws broken today here in oh, this city. I wouldn't doubt that. I think we ought to go out and break a few when this uh, remote ends. Huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we're reporting live from right here on Bourbon Street at the balcony of the Royal Sinesto Hotel. Let's go back out to Metairie now in Veterans Highway. Play-by-play, <laughs> play, I'm surprised he didn't give us one. Hey, we're making, uh, we're doing all right. It's... We're making a kill. This is this is a very small portion of what we've already received. We're having a great time out here on Veterans Highway at the Firestone store. I'm Judy Storch here with John Snell. We have a wonderful parade going by with hundreds of thousands of people lined up to watch it. You know, I'm not sure what the connection is of some of the cups we've been getting from the politicians. They seem to be able to throw the the farthest. I don't know if it's all there that handshaking in the or, of these cups. or what, right. uh, or what it is. <laughs> well, coming into view now is the Hammond High School band. We're taking a look at a great float too. This is the Tulip Festival float from representing Michigan. Boy, some guy on there is an ex-baseball player. Look at that arm. I wonder if they realize that the Tulip Festival. I guess they do that they're being saluted at what is uh, the biggest and best festival uh, in the New World. Listen to the crowd of here going wild. This parade is...
Carnival Spirit 85 will continue. You know, there's more to Burger King than burgers. Sure. How about a whaler? What about a chicken sandwich? The whaler's a big, plump filet of fish. Yeah, well, the chicken's tender, juicy white meat, and... The whaler has lettuce. So has the chicken sandwich. But the whaler has creamy tartar sauce. The chicken has real egg mayonnaise. How about a fresh sesame seed bun? Or a sesame seed roll. The whaler sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Whaler. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Whaler. Chicken. Chicken. W-A-J-Y FM. We've got more great songs than ever before. Joy 102 plays more music, more Streisand, Kenny, Neil, Frank. If you haven't tried us lately, tune to Joy 102 FM, where the music has style. As you can see, Jim Henderson tried his very best to cover the parade from ground level today, but at a point just totally exhausted, was taken aboard one of the truck floats, propped up in a high chair, and is in the midst of being carried away to Canal Street and sights unknown after that. Isn't she cute? That is an absolutely adorable picture, and bless her heart, it may be telling the story of many of us in about 12 right. hours. You're right. I'd like to change places with her right now. <laughs> so it's a nice furry looking oh, seat yeah. she's in. That's great. But you know, if people at home could hear the noise here, it's a thunderous noise, and that that child can sleep through it is a statement of yeah. her exhaustion. Uh, it gives you an idea how long a trip she's made. The ground level uh, shots Crossing Gallier Hall gives you an idea of why people like the truck raids so much. They're throwing cups, uh, like most of the parades, a, a new thing that's going on in Mardi Gras. They're throwing 50,000 cups from the Elks Parade alone. That's not Crescent City, just the Elks Parade. Between the two, they expect to throw about a half million beads. Not the balloons or anything else, just a half million beads. And uh, when you pass these uh, uh, truck parades, especially at the height level we're looking into, the, you can see that the throws, whereas Rex and Zulu have little uh, appendages that come out from the side of the floats that they hang beads and stuff on, these people have huge cardboard boxes right, that they're pulling from. Down. I'm and telling you, this little girl is the epitome of Mardi Gras <laughs> at 1.30 in the afternoon. She may tell the story yet, but however, there's a lot of activity that maybe she'll wake up for out in Metairie. Let's take a look out in Jefferson Parish. Angela, we're back. John Snow and Judy Storch in the Firestone Store parking lot looking at a wonderful float. This is Pioneer Days. <laughs> a lot of cheering. It kind of looks like Harry Lee. It does look like Harry Lee. We were just talking about yeah. that earlier. I don't know. Harry is an and officer. And there's Harry right up there on the float. Sheriff Lee <laughs> with a good arm. I hope he sees me. No, I missed you. Oh, well. <laughs> but he's throwing generously. An officer here and Free commercial, I guess. That was a great float. It kind of represent the rule men lived by in Wyoming, which of course was the pistol. Also a lone cantina in the back, you'll notice there. The theme, of course, festivals of America, and each of the floats a salute to uh, various festivals in the United States, from the Hula Festival to the uh, Gasparilla Festival right. in Florida. And I'm looking forward to We're looking at one of the Princess Convertibles right now, Andrea Johnson of Opelousas, Louisiana, and Paper Queen. Peggy Triana of Bogalusa. And behind that, the Lake Providence High School Band from Lake Providence, Louisiana, and let's listen in on them. <laughs> Plenty more happening this Mardi Gras day. A lot happening at Canal Street. Let's go to Andre and Eric. Thank you, Judy. Uh, you hear behind us the uh, Andrew J. Bell Junior High School Crusader Band. They just did their rendition of Torture, the Jermaine Jackson and they're very good. Marching units following up behind, and the floats are continuing. Now we're going to try and get a, a shot of uh, Bill Elder, who is on float number 19 in this Rex Carnival Parade. And if we got that shot now of Bill, you know, it's hard to tell which one is which with all the masks on, but Bill kind of is a dead giveaway. There's a camera focused on him, so uh, it's always a good shot. Anyway, he's waving at us right now, and uh, we're looking... And let's see, I'm trying to pick him out now. He should have a camera in front of him. And uh, here he goes, there he's waving. All right, we see, uh, that's Bill Elder, who uh, 
Yeah, I guess that's kind of a thrill for him to be riding on the uh, the float today. What a thrill. The Mardi Gras mystery man. We finally found him. Float number 19, if you're out on the parade route, Bill Elder is one of the masters. I'll tell you what, in this Rex parade, they have got some colorful floats that have gone by today. A lot of work has gone into to the making of all these floats. And uh, just for the few hours that uh, they parade on the street for millions of people to be watching. Even the costumes seem a bit more elaborate than in years past. I mean, once they get the, the garment itself done, now they're doing all the beading and uh, adding a lot of different decorations. It, it seems like it's a bit more work. A more, bit more work is going into it now. This one going by us right now is uh, a shocking pink. I mean, you don't miss that. Shocking. Yeah. It's called the Royal Bay. And it's one of the many floats that you've been seeing uh, on our coverage today on Channel 4 of the Rex Parade. And uh, equally uh, colorful floats out in Jefferson Parish where they're uh, having the crew of Argus today. And here comes another high school marching band. They're not quite close enough for us to identify them quite yet. And no slowdown in activity. Anyway, we're talking about uh, the festivities out in Jefferson Parish. Let's go back to Judy and John out on Veterans Highway. All right, thank you, Eric. We're finishing up there with the St. James High School Band. Uh, performed it among other places at the 1984 World's Fair. Live along Veterans Highway at the Firestone store and a perfect view for Argus 1985. Look at this one coming. Holiday in Dixie. What a beautiful float. And a Southern Belle, of course. What else could it be? Grace is the front of it. I'd like to get a look at this uh, antebellum mansion that they uh, have on the side here. A salute to the Holiday in Dixie. They're throwing throws from inside the mansion, I guess. You're talking uh, not something that's very cheap. These uh, these throws run six, seven cents a piece. Uh, a doubloon. For a doubloon, run. that's right. But I think they'd rather have the doubloons than the money. No doubt about it. <laughs> okay, we're back here on Canal Street, and uh, we're continuing with the Rex Parade. And uh, still some more colorful floats. It seems like this has been a never-ending parade here on Canal Street. And it's hard to believe that more people could fill the, uh, the street today. But uh, I don't know where they're coming from. But, but Canal Street has really turned into a sea of people from, oh, from past Rampart Street all the way down to the foot. Now, during the Zulu Parade, it was uh, really a sea of people on this uptown side of Canal Street. But for the Rex Parade, they have come out of the woodworks. And I mean... This is an enthusiastic crowd watching the Rex Parade go by. Here we see the Monarch Butterfly Float, number 25. Uh, some very colorful costumed riders on that. And everybody is down there with their hands extended, waiting for something to come by. Now, in this parade, we're having a lot less trouble with uh, crowd control than we saw in the Zulu Parade today. People are staying a little farther away from the floats and uh, a little more subdued. We saw in the Zulu Parade a lot more uh, swelling toward the floats, but uh, people are still very enthusiastic here. This is the Royal Palm that's going by now, and they are, they are some throwers. They're throwing tennis balls or something. And they've got their own music. Uh, they throw with a lot of fervor on that float. This is the Calliope. And uh, it looks like we're getting, uh, I guess we're winding down here on the, uh, on the Rex Parade. Let's go back out to uh, the crew out at Veterans Highway, John and Judy. Thank you, Eric. Judy Storch with John Snell. Could you explain this to anyone else anywhere in the world? That's what the lady from Idaho said a little earlier. I, I said, what are you going to tell your friends when you get back home? And she said, they'll never believe it. She has no way of explaining the mayhem. It's unbelievable. I believe the float we're looking at right now is the Miss America pageant. Atlantic City. Should be a bathing beauty right there. Look at that suit. Not quite 1985, I don't think. Unless I haven't seen the fashion magazines yet. You know, you're talking by the time you get done here with with all these throws of in some of the uh, more lavish uh, parades, six, seven hundred dollars, and it's not unheard of for a crew member to spend more than a thousand dollars on throws. And uh, I think it was Garland uh, earlier was talking about the fact that 
that even some of the most lavish of the uh, crews are the truck parades That's that right. uh, we're yet to That's see, right. so the, the treats are only beginning. A crowd of people, there are masses of people everywhere you look, and this is apparently going to be a record setter in Jefferson Parish with hundreds of thousands of people from all ages on this parade route. It's, it's fantastic, and it's one big party. And I it's think. kind of an irony of the thing is that the people say they come here to escape the crowds and the traffic <laughs> and everything else. If you've ever experienced Veterans Highway traffic on a Saturday, uh, getting out of here will be a problem. But uh, I don't think anyone cares about that right now. I have a sneaking suspicion, too. It's kind of community pride, in a sense. Uh, um, we asked a lot of the people where they were from, and the, the response was, well, I'm from Kenner, or I'm from Metairie. And, uh, That's right. I think but by the same token, we talked to people from New Jersey earlier, from South Vachery. It's a sight to see, and you can't see it anywhere else. No, there's nothing else like it. And the greatest free show on Earth for, if not the members of the crew, then certainly the other people masses of people. We're going to be back. We're going to take a short break. Lots more to see, lots more to hear. Stay tuned. Carnival Spirit 85 will continue. I'm not about to give my family a cough medicine with some strong drug in it. When we start coughing from a cold or flu, my husband and I take soothing Creomotion, and I give my little one Gentle Creomotion for children. Creomotion is made from natural ingredients. Nothing harmful, no narcotics, no drowsy side effects. I like that. Help relieve your family's coughs with Creomotion and Creomotion for children. The natural cough medicines I know you can trust. Here at the Silas Thorndike Academy, our boys display exemplary behavior. Occasionally, we do have an outbreak of uh, high-spiritedness. When these little mishaps occur, we rely on Brawny. Brawny! It's the largest towel you can buy. It's economical and can handle even the toughest jobs. Thanks ever so much, Brawny. Anytime, Teach. Brawny, the big tough towel without the giant price. A Mardi Gras in Jefferson Parish, and this float saluting the Fiesta de San Jacinto in uh, Texas, something uh, that is known all over the state of Texas, we're told. I don't know if it's as big as Mardi Gras, but it's a very popular one in Texas. Cactus plants and sage brush around this float. Listening to the Bogalusa High School Band, of course, from Bogalusa. Whoops, I think I'm wrong. Walker's Band, am I right? That's right, from Walker, Louisiana. They're just as good. <laughs> They're also out of order, but who cares? It's Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> they also were in the World's Fair last year. A lot of these, these bands do a lot of traveling. People don't realize how much work they put into it until well, they, they hear them, of course. And Argus uh, takes great pride in the bands that it displays. Uh, the fact that they are uh, some very, very competitive bands and they come from all over the state and in some cases from all over the country. It's, it's really a, a, a... And you can see uh, the senor coming <laughs> into uh, view just a little bit. I wonder if he's throwing pesos off there. Or... We'll soon find out. Hopefully. Now, what you're hearing and looking at is the Bogalusa High School Band. Let's take a listen. You know, this is a seven mile trek by the time these kids get done. And of course they do this in many Mardi Gras parades all year long, but not necessarily these bands because these are some of the bands coming in in particular for the competition. But they never look tired, and I would imagine no. they never get tired of it. There's such an adre adrenaline flow going. Well, there's got to be I, masses, a, a sea of humanity here. What you're looking That's a beautiful float. The costumes on that are great. They give you that flavor, the Spanish flavor. All right, let's find out, as the parade on veterans continues, what the action is on Bourbon Street. Chris and Larry. 
All right, with Larry Matson, I'm Chris Myers. And live. And we're on. Okay. <laughs> yes. we're cute. Now we're gonna we're get, we have some tape. This is fun because we're running out of time here in our continuous coverage here at Channel 4. And Larry Matson has been down on Bourbon Street all day and I've been checking some of the things out. We have some of the you told me some of the best costumes that you think you've ever seen at Mardi Gras. It's some of the uh, they call it the fashion show on Bourbon Street. Well that's the new name for it. Most people that live in New Orleans know it by another name, of course, over the years. And I might mention that it's fun to be in Bourbon Street area and be recognized by all the droves of thousands thousands of fans of Channel 4, but there's one area that we're glad that we weren't recognized in, and it's the area in which we're about to see. And we're going to show you that videotape, but we have that tape. Larry, let's take a look. Why don't you stay with me? This is some of the activity that we taped earlier, and they call it the Bourbon Street Fashion Show, and it starts at Dumaine, and it's near the uh, Cafe Lafitte Exile Bar. I think they're the actual sponsors of it, and I, I don't know the names of some of these costumes, but there was an outstanding crowd on the platform there. That is a Caesar Augustus, I think, or at least a facsimile thereof. Well, some of the costumes they told, look at the headdress, now, that has to be heavy to handle, and they said that thousands of dollars are spent on these costumes, and months, maybe five or six months, are spent working on them. That's true, and they come from all over the country, too. These just aren't local guys. These guys come from San Francisco, maybe even other parts of the world, but at least all over the country. Maybe even better reach Hitter. Oh, Marrero, <laughs> even. I mean, you know, they come from across the West Bank. But I'm amazed whether, whether you're... Uh, heterosexual, homosexual, whatever your sex is, the people here all come together Mardi Gras to have a good time and they do admire the work and the effort put in putting on a good show. Well, I think everyone gets along today and has a good time and I think I think this is a great uh, amplification of how people can get along in an environment that's bizarre as this. It's incredible. <laughs> and Mardi Gras is the bizarre. <laughs> I mean, when I could dress like a doughboy and you could be a referee and we can allow this kind of thing to go on in the streets, you know that people want to have fun. Well, my wife dresses like that every morning for breakfast. Not yeah. like that, no. <laughs> I hope she doesn't do that when it's time to serve. Because uh, anyway, there was a great crowd, as we saw, and they were all there for the Bourbon Street Fashion Show. I don't know about you, but I don't want to enter that thing next year. No, I don't either. I don't know why we say some of the things we do. No, but we're live, and we're having a good time like everybody else with Larry Matson and I'm Chris Myers. We're at the Royal Sedesta Hotel balcony. Who knows how much longer we'll be here over Bourbon Street. Right now, we're going to go to Canal. Well, thank you, boys. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have a hard time describing the action here on Canal Street, but uh, some of the things you see in Bourbon, on Bourbon, uh, are really uh, indescribable. You understand it when you see it, though. <laughs> yeah, anyway, you're seeing the view of Canal right now from the Marriott Hotel. Things have kind of calmed down a little. Everybody's Pretty just kind of milling around, yeah, as we're waiting for, I guess that's the Elk Parade uh, behind us. There's a lull in between the end of Rex and the beginning of the Elk. Everybody gets a chance to catch their breath, get a new spot on the street if they need one, and what everyone's doing right now. Yeah, now we noticed before, after the Zulu parade, that the crowd thinned out pretty much. I guess everybody came into the McDonald's after they heard you were going for the record for sales here. <laughs> They're doing pretty well going yeah, toward that yeah, record. Yeah, they are, huh? So anyway, uh, but the crowd did thicken out. I'm surprised to see this many people. I thought it was full for Zulu, but this is incredible to look yes, here. Yes, it is, and, and there are people for miles looking up uh, toward the lake down this way. I can't see street uh, no, at any that's, point. Uh, that's, it's people. That's hard to believe because you look past. Now, that must be a... Uh, What's the overpass over there? The I-10. Yeah. Beyond and, uh, I-10, there are people. It's uh, incredible. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the Marriott, uh, our camera from the Marriott. You can get some kind of a vantage point as just to how many people are here. I'd hate to try and, uh, and estimate a guess, but, gee, would you say maybe uh, half city, a million? City authorities were looking for a full million, Ooh. including the quarter and all the peripheral areas. They're looking for, and with the weather cooperating the way it is, it's, it's very easy to think that they might just make it. We've got some revelers down here. If you can train your camera <laughs> down there, Bill, who want to say hi. There he is, the guy with no face. <laughs> yeah. And those are just uh, a few of the people that are here on Canal Street today waiting for uh, whatever else is going to be coming by. All, <laughs> all right, uh, enough of this. Let's go back out to Veterans Highway and John and Judy. Thank you, Eric. Judy Storch with John Snell. We're back on Veterans Highway with a very lively parade, to say the least. We just took a trip to Hawaii with the hula float. We're waiting for the 50 truck floats to come by. In the, uh, the crew of Jefferson's and the crew of uh, Elks Jefferson's, the two truck parades that follow here, and that's when you really get in on the serious throws. <laughs> or so it's uh, purported, although uh, Argus certainly wasn't stingy. They, they were... Uh, Absolutely continuously not. heaving things off the side of the of the float. We could open our own little shop, I think. This is the uh, St. Charles Parish representation, the St. Charles Parish Sheriff's Posse coming into view now. 
on some beautiful animals, too. They've got a few throws themselves. Well, they have a good time with all this. I mean, it must be an incredible experience, and I'm jealous of Bill Elder, and we'll let him know it later. <laughs> Uh, to be, and I've always wanted to do it, to be on the other side and just get that view of these thousands of outstretched arms screaming for something that is plastic and is technically <laughs> worthless. But uh, it's a life and death situation, and everybody for himself when that hits the ground. And That's and right. Uh, and you see them all year round, too. Do you notice that? You go into someone's house, a neighbor's house, and they have a, a pitcher or a vase of them on their coffee <laughs> or table. It's, or it's the middle of summer, and somebody <laughs> still has his his uh, Bacchus beads around his uh, rearview mirror. This I noticed uh, earlier when in Ar Garland and Angela's report they had some sleeping children. Not so here yet. We've had families out here since 5 this morning, but the adrenaline is going, and so is the parade. It's not over yet by a long shot. Well, some of the families uh, say they came out here, and, and the line always was, well, we used to go to Orleans, but now we have children, we want to bring them here. And I guess it's just it's just a matter of what you want, and uh, and it's just a matter of uh, a little of, bit more uh, of a family situation out here, I think. Could be. I think. I guess it would be. It would depend on your on your vantage point. Certainly, you can uh, get that sort of thing from Rex too. Uh, we'll have more of Carnival Spirit '85 after this. Carnival Spirit '85 will continue. You did not try, and you didn't take your hands out of your pockets. Here is actually the official float number one in the Elks Parade. It is uh, float number one, and it is the Animal Olympics. And look at the animation on this one. This is excellent. Obviously, the little bear skin. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Knock the feather off if, my head. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're going to survive this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> More floats now, moving along in the Elks Grove Arlenians uh, parade. That was obviously a tribute to the 1984 Olympics. Jewels of the Sea is the next truck parade, number two in Elks. And the uh, this Pretty one green. done in, in light. Pretty you know, melon green, I think it, that might be the color. More animation, you can see the, the fish kind of ducking up from behind. The, uh, the the front of the float and also Wait. you can see the fans uh, and, and there's a mermaid very discreetly uh, <laughs> positioned at the back of the float that you'll see in a moment and a lot of the, mirrors glued to their costumes uh, these are all handmade costumes and uh, uh oh here comes a whole band well watch done. out charlie <laughs> here it is <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to warn you charlie knock the hat right off of him are you okay Ladies and gentlemen, you think this is a glamorous job. It is hazardous. Are you all right? <laughs> Knock the headset and the hat off. <laughs> you can see how a... Uh, <laughs> you can warn them. Whoa! This is a gross of beads, and let me tell you... <laughs> With a cup. A gross of beads hurts. <laughs> yeah, we have, been, we have been hit a number of times in the course of this coverage these last few days. There are the Indians. Hiya! You, you see the next one coming before I do. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and warn you. I was warning. Maybe I wasn't speaking loudly enough. This is Mardi Gras in the patch. Okay, let's check in now with Bill Yeager, who is right in the middle of the mascothon. Bill? The mascothon not actually got underway at this point. It's just about to start. It's scheduled for 2 o'clock, and at this time, they're getting the contestants lined up, sobering up the judges. Uh, no, I take that back. The judges are all relatively sober. They're getting the judges in their place. The contestants are in their place. And we're about ready to kick off the finals in this, what purports to be the first annual Mardi Gras Mascathon. They uh, are assembling the contestants at this time. This is an event which is sponsored by TV6, by the Mayor's Mardi Gras Coordinating Committee, the Rex Organization.
organization and McDonald's. And this is the first time we've held this, but if the success we've had so far is any indication, I think it will grow and grow and continue to be a yearly event. Uh, we'll be back with this contest and take a look at who has the best costumes this year in a little while. Back to you right now, Charlie. Okay, Bill, thank you very much. Here you see more of the uh, Elks crew of Arlenians. This is wonderful. Floats. This is Parasols of Mardi Gras. And again, more animation. I'm going to keep one eye on these floats, folks, yeah, as Charlie. we uh, <laughs> talk to you about these floats. And I love your positioning because you are blocking a lot of the oh, thanks, throws. Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> you stay football. on that side, I'll stay on this side. <laughs> you say, I've got to kind of talk to you and watch them at the same time. <laughs> They're moving off to our right here. <laughs> I'm considering asking our floor directors next year for maybe some, some chicken screen. And do like they do for the president. You know, they have that plexiglass. <laughs> That's yeah. right. We need, we need some bead-proof glass. <laughs> they all mean well, of course, and, and we know that. And sometimes, we appreciate their generosity. Sometimes, you know, it's etc. <laughs> and headache number five at about at this point. <laughs> when they start drawing blood, it's not fun anymore. More of the floats making their way onto Canal Street now, and uh, they're going to be, um, they're going to have uh, quite a time here. More of the uh, floats <laughs> all of a sudden having a difficult time getting through the trucks. I'm always amazed. Every now and then we have an incident involving one of these trucks, and of course it's unfortunate. Nothing reported this year, and uh, but I'm always amazed that there aren't more incidents involving uh, these big 18-wheel trucks uh, moving down through these very crowded streets. Yeah, when you have the inebriated parade watcher, you have children that sometimes manage to get away from their parents. You know, they tried to put up barricades and cables to keep the crowds back, but it really isn't effective. It doesn't work. And some, in some turns and stretches of, of St. Charles Avenue and Canal Street, the cable works and the barricades work, but not all over. And we'll be back with more of our Mardi Gras coverage right after this. Here come the newlyweds. You'll laugh when man and wife team up to win in the car in front of his parents' house. That's right, yeah. And lose. I do not. You're in an elk fire. I can't admit I'm wrong. With grace. He said 10. <laughs> and style. He said you're sexy with something on. Isn't this fun? Aren't we having a good time? <laughs> Let the newlyweds win you over. Weekdays at 4 on TV6. A doctor who could be on a top medical team at any hospital. Pilots with the right stuff. A construction engineer. An electronics technician. They could work anywhere. They're all working in the Navy, where some of the best people in their fields believe being the best means more when it's done for their country. Navy know-how. It's working for America. Discover the uniqueness that is Louisiana through the Louisiana Nature Center's hands-on exhibits, which encourage you to touch, explore, and look at things in a different way. The Louisiana Nature Center, 11,000 Lake Forest Boulevard, open Tuesdays through Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and weekends, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Bob Krieger and Ann Mulligan on New Center 6 at 5. Back on Canal Street with the Elks Crew of Orleans. I just saw a New Orleans special. You know what a New Orleans special is? I just saw it. It was turning a three-block-long limousine that was carrying members from the Boston Club around in a crowd. I mean, literally did a 360-degree turn right. on Canal Street Are in you, this crowded craziness. A U-turn on a street going the other way. That's a New Orleans <laughs> special. <laughs> Only in New Orleans. This is a cute float. Oh, a cute truck. Bag. And, oh, oh, here come the beads. <laughs> the buzz and bunnies. Watch out. What? <laughs> Charlie, have you ever considered opening up our own bead I, shop? I, well, if I make it through this Mardi Gras, Lynn, I'm <laughs> <laughs> and mind you, I, that, is, that is not a foregone conclusion at this point, the way these beads are coming at us. <laughs> Again, I really appreciate you taking the right side. Well, of I'm going to move this. here shortly, Lynn. I'm gonna <laughs> this is Christmas on the Bayou. And uh, these people have combined the colors of purple, green, and yellow with green and red and white. Oh, I know these now, people on this. this yeah, is now, and I'm going to suggest you 
watch out because I, I, I see the man at the, the right point of the, the screen is Weldon Heiser. And there are your bikini underpants, Charlie, <laughs> coming at you. I want to feel, you think you'll get them over here? Well, let's Look at see. The watch out. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Well. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these are my friends, Great. believe it or not. Don't show me your enemies, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I'll have to talk to Weldon about that later. Here I'll now. just thank you. Those Here's floating them right. Look at the animation <laughs> smoke coming out of the choo-choo train uh, at the engine in front. The Rebel Railroad Line, I think it says. Yes, the Rebel Railroad Line. And there's a uh, Ferris wheel being pulled and a giraffe sticking its head up out of one of the uh, boxcars. And, it's a very uh, festive, festive float. It's really something. You know, they actually call these, I keep calling them floats, um, but the Elks people call them floats. We refer to them as a truck parade, but the individual elements of the parade are actually referred to as floats. Float number eight, right here. They are now float number nine. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to get us, Lynn. I mean, it's not uh, We are sitting ducks, Charles. <laughs> Have you ever felt big, like a sitting duck? Big target. I knew this hat of mine was going to be a target today. Here's a oh, truck goodness. full of puppies. Are, are those puppies? Yes, those are puppies. And cupids. One of the trucks is head bringing its own music with it. It's called puppy love. Of course. They're puppies and hearts. Puppy love. Uh oh, oh, watch, watch out, out Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, watch this. Watch out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you're in trouble when they point and uh, shoot. Ah. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> As they say, oh. we're having a good time now. You're not a bad catch. <laughs> Oh, it's it's gotten to be um, it's got to be preservation of life and limb now. It's not just a matter of this is of survival of the fittest. Beads, it's uh, preserving. Uh, I think Darwin must have been referring to Mardi Gras in New Orleans when he talked about survival of the fittest. Or survival of anchor people. Let's go to Metairie with Good the idea. Ann and Alec.